most notably last year, the unranked South Carolina Gamecocks upsetting Georgia the way that they did. Make no mistake, Mike Bobo is very familiar with this rivalry, as is Kirby Smart. Both head coaches having played in this rivalry, obviously on the Georgia side of it as a player, and Mike Bobo for the first time finds himself on an opposing sideline against his alma mater in somewhat unexpected dynamic. Came in to be the play caller, offensive coordinator under Will Muschamp, finds himself in an interim head coaching position now, but two players that have now become two head coaches that know each other very well in two programs that recruit against one another, and that defeat last year that South Carolina dealt Georgia has reheated this rivalry. Georgia's going to get the football first, and Mike Bobo had a great performance against Georgia, or South Carolina rather, 25 years ago. The only guy that's had a better one was the guy that's starting at quarterback tonight in his SEC opener, and that's JT Daniels. We'll see the football in just a moment as the Gamecocks get ready to kick it deep. Mitch Jeter kicking it to that man, Kiaris Jackson. A beautiful night for football here in the Palmetto State. Temperature in the high 50s. Big cold front coming this way tomorrow, but a perfect night for some fall football. Short kick by Jeter and it goes out of bounds. And the kickoff specialist will give George a good field position to start the game. And here comes JT Daniels. What a debut he made last Saturday night in Athens. Well, it was much awaited. A lot of folks. As the penalty is explained to us, anticipating a change at quarterback. And finally, JT Daniels really getting forced into service. Stetson Bennett separating that shoulder on the second series versus Florida. Georgia only completed nine passes versus the Gators. Change was afoot, and it was available because JT Daniels at that point had asserted himself and shown his confidence in that surgically repaired right knee. First play goes to the ground, and Zamir White, and White is met after a gain of three. Dogs offense, really, it was so bizarre, Stinch, to see them almost exclusively throw the football with success on the ground. Last week, they only had eight yards rushing. White at 21. Now, that eight yards rushing does include sacks and the yards that Daniels lost, but strange to see a Georgia Kirby Smart offense struggle on the ground all night like they did against Mississippi State. A quick pass out to Jermaine Burton. Wondered if we'd see Jermaine tonight. He's been nursing a quad contusion, but he makes the first catch of the game. It'll be third and short. Yeah, it was interesting. And talking with offensive coordinator and play caller Todd Monk, and he said, look, I feel like maybe I got away from the run a little too early. Mississippi State's good up front, but from a play calling standpoint, he felt like he could have stuck with it a little bit longer. Already here, a run towards the middle of the field, then a quick wide receiver screen to Burton. Pickens did a good job blocking to set up this third and short. Straight ahead to White, easy first down past midfield. Let's take a look at Dr. Pepper Fansville giving fans the keys to the game. Well, already we've seen it. A couple of runs now from the Bulldogs. they got to get that going so that they can control the game. Defensively, find a way to get off the field. They were 6 of 8 on third downs for the Mississippi State Bulldogs last week. They did a fantastic job for the Gamecocks. They're going to hit some shots downfield on offense and generate takeaways defensively. Fakes the toss and across the middle, wide open is Trey McKinney, the tight end inside the 20 and wrestled out of bounds near the 10 yard line. A position that fans have been clamoring for around the Georgia program, get the ball to the tight ends. Trey McKinney, transfer, quick shot, and already JT Daniels starting off hot in the passing game. Graduate transfer, that is, from Florida State. This is straight ahead, and it's White who bounced it out a little bit to the right and still on his feet. The whistle does come down after a gain of a couple. Georgia has not used their tight ends that much this year, but that's the biggest play of the season for a tight end. Kitty injured in camp before the season started. 
wide open to give the Dogs an opportunity to score on their first drive of the game. Daniels in zone one on one and it's over the head of his intended target. He was looking for George Pickens. Pickens was on the receiving end of the first of four JT Daniels passes that were for touchdowns last week. They try to air it out there. Now a third down. He was, he was incredible on third down last week. He was remarkable. Yeah, there's no doubt. You saw him 10 of 11 passing on third downs, and two of those were for touchdowns. James Cook in the game. Quick pass. Caught. McKinney to the goal line. Marked out inside the one. Jalen Foster pushed him out. You can see they were trying to get a little bit of a rub there. And looks to me like McKinney had that ball inside the pylon before he would have been out of bounds. As the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. It's Alex Moore, tonight's referee, and you see Kirby Smart. Think he's in the end zone. Mitchell Wilkins, our replay official, will talk to Alex and take a look at whether the graduate transfer is in the end zone before Foster forces him out. It sure looks like it right there. Yeah, that's a great look at it. Great camera work there. Clearly still in bounds. Nothing would have established him down. Out of bounds, that right hand comes down, but not before he switches the ball to his left hand and gets it inside that garnet-colored pylon. Efficient, to say the least, on this opening drive. We talk about the tight ends becoming more involved. McKinney figuring pretty prominently in this opening possession for the Georgia offense. They've used five different tight ends, one of which is Jalen Carter, the defensive player that had the touchdown against Tennessee. And they only had 14 total catches among those five guys coming into the game. McKinney already with two. After review, the ruling is a touchdown. And that is McKitty's first touchdown as a Georgia Bulldog. We were talking with Todd Buck and we asked, you know, what's the difference among these tight ends? You know, John Fitzpatrick, big body. Darnell Washington has watched really well as a true freshman, number zero. And 87, Trey McKinney said, oh, you know, they're all pretty similar. We clearly like something in 87. He got two targets. Here in the opening drive, and one of them, they got the dogs in the end zone. Jack Podlesny continues the best extra point streak in NCAA history. It's 317 in a row. Seven plays, 64 yards. JT Daniels, the quarterback for the dogs, gets it to McKinney, to Pater. Bulldogs with the early score. Nobody likes an awkward silence. You can actually use it for something good. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. What do you do for a living? I'm an engineer at IBM. I work within our Watson Internet of Things division, and I'm also an inventor. Wow, that's really cool. The fun part for me of inventing is just learning new technologies, creating ideas, and problem solving. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. This Thanksgiving, HBO Max invites you to enjoy HBO for free. Oh, here we go. Let's get together. Plus, discover a special collection of exclusive Max originals on demand. <laughs> All Ooh. for free. Whoa. During the HBO Max free preview event, November 25th through the 29th. This is very exciting. You ready? Oh, yeah. Experience amazing shows and movies during the HBO Max free preview event. We're done with disposables. Introducing super leak-proof underwear from NYX. 
the most absorbent period undies ever. They look and feel and machine wash just like regular underwear. Because we're done with tampons running out, pads getting twisted, and days being ruined. Leave that trash behind and switch to super comfortable, super confident, super leak-proof underwear. Visit Nix.com. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready! That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you, too. Trey McKitty with the big touchdown catch, diving to the end zone. It was really the 40-yard catch a couple plays before that that set this up. Yeah, ran it off a of play action, was able to sneak him behind the coverage. He's wide open over the middle. JT Daniels padding those stats, getting the tight ends involved. It's three of four for 51 yards on that opening drive. The only incompletion was the overthrown ball, trying to hit Pickens on the play right prior to McKitty. Muscle his way into the end zone. Jake Marta kicking to Zaquandri White at the goal line, and he's coming out. And he's down at the 19-yard line. Listen it to the field in Alyssa Lang. Yeah, guys, we've talked about quarterback shuffles for Georgia. The same is the case for South Carolina. Tonight it'll be the freshman Luke Doty making his first start after playing the last half of the game last week against Mizzou. And he really gave this Gamecocks offense a spark that they've been looking for all season. He can run it. He can throw it. He gives them a ability to take off and run. It helps that he's built like a Mack truck, too. His teammates impressed but not surprised with his leadership just a week ago. Offensive lineman Sedarius Hutcherson says he always walks around with a ton of energy, constantly high-fiving everyone. Mike Bobo said they used to have Positive Thursday in the building, which eventually was renamed to Doty Thursday because of his infectious positive attitude. And I can tell you, when he ran out of the tunnel tonight, he ran straight to the student section to get his guys hyped up. I love it. Loop Doty Thursday is what's it called because of the guy's attitude. He's already got a smile on his face. And I got positive news for the Gamecocks, Alyssa. Offsides on Georgia, re-kick. Yeah, see if you can improve that starting field position. We saw Doty there on the sideline with most accomplished quarterback here in the South Carolina football program, Connor Shaw, now an on-the-field coach for the Gamecocks. It was interesting talking to those South Carolina coaches. They said they kind of remind them a little bit of Connor Shaw. It's an even better kick than the first one, and this will give South Carolina the ball at the 25 instead of the 15. Here's Doty, the freshman from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, coming into the game in the second half against the Tigers, like Alyssa was talking about last week. Looked impressive in the last 30 minutes of the game. He really did, and actually, I was surprised at how well he threw the football because we knew he could make plays with his legs. Extending plays, scramble yards. Last week, he ended up being the leading rusher for the Gamecocks. 11 carries for 59 yards. A lot of that were not called runs. He was just trying to make a play with his legs. He's got the most important Gamecock in the backfield with him. We have another whistle. And there's Kevin Harris right next to the referee that we were talking about. Evidently some issue with the clock, and we'll see if we can get that uh, straightened out. But Please reset the game clock to 12 minutes and 5 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I've got to tell you, Taylor, there was an incomplete pass on the opening drive for Georgia. It looked like that clock kept running when it should have been. Probably lost... 20 some odd plus seconds with that clock still running and just put on what another 12 seconds on the clock i was saying most important gamecock there he is kevin harris and he's met immediately by aziz ojalari off of the edge harris has been one of the best tailbacks in the sec this season as he is second in the SEC with 109 yards per game. You know, other than Najee Harris, someone of his namesake, he's the best runner, he's been the most productive in the conference this year. Loss of one on the first play, tries the right side, and he'll get a couple tackled by Christopher Smith. 
Dogs are down a couple of bodies on defense. Richard LeCount, Julian Rochester, they'll, they're will they still hurt, not playing in the game. And we don't see Jordan Davis out there yet. There is a chance that Jordan, the defensive tackle that was hurt, hyperextending his elbow against Kentucky, could play tonight. He was warming up. Third and seven for Doty. Ready to throw for the first time. Doesn't see anything downfield, and he takes the sack. It's a quick three and out for the Gamecocks. Jalen Carter making the tackle. A down and distance that South Carolina can't survive if they find themselves in these third and long scenarios. Obvious that it would be outside of the comfort zone. Luke Doty, prior to the Missouri game, had only attempted one pass. It was versus Texas A&M, an incompletion. You could see him had that run option as he rolled to his left. The defense did a great job of collapsing around him. Ty Kroger's had a good season. Kicks it deep to the 25-yard line and tripped up his Kiaris Jackson. Flag does come in after a 48-yard punt. This could pin the Gamecocks back even further. A really nice play. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number five. 10-yard penalty, first down. Of course, that's Georgia that'll be pinned back even deeper. Matt Landers called for that penalty. Georgia will be back on offense after JT Daniels takes him down the field on the first drive. Back out there again here on a Saturday night. We love HelloFresh. It's so easy and delicious every single time. And we get to try new things. Team Z, we're going to make some pork sausage spaghetti bolognese. Can you say bolognese? Bolognese. I'm ready. Wow. Mm. How is it? It's really good. I tried the spaghetti. Do you like oh. it, my George? I think that's a yes. Use code YUM90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale. Dogs up 7-0. JT Daniels starting at quarterback. Had an incredible high school career at Legendary School Matter Day where he threw for 152 touchdowns. In fact, he didn't even play his senior year of high school. At 17 years old, he was a true freshman starter for the Trojans. But last year, he tore his ACL against Fresno State in the first game of the season. Then in May of this year, transferred to Georgia. Had to get that knee right. Made his debut last Saturday night against Mississippi State. 401 yards passing, four touchdowns. Dogs fans everywhere are saying, hallelujah, we found our quarterback. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good thing they did because that running game evaporated last week. They needed all four of those touchdowns to come away with a victory over Mississippi State. Straight ahead running for Zamir White. Wow. And look at that push 
from that Georgia offensive line. I think a lot of people, Stinch, were wondering how come they didn't see JT Daniels earlier than last weekend. But just remember, this is as Daniels hands off here to White and get, getting that big push. Remember that Daniels had that knee injury and then had to have a second surgery, and he wasn't under the supervision of USC or Georgia when he had that knee repair. It was just kind of floating out there, and obviously it delayed his confidence in that repair. Day. James Cook on the handoff, first down run, and he's into Gamecocks territory, pushed out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Well, first you get the push from Zamir White. He got about five yards just pushing that pile. This time, great job. Blockers out in front. Justin Schaefer, Ben Cleveland pulling from his left guard position. Right guard pulling out in front. And James Cook, Todd Munkin talked about it. He's an athlete that's developing into a tailback. He's got great skills. He's learning to be a better runner. Showed his speed there on that kick. 44 yards for him on that play. Looks like some sort of confusion in the backfield, and the Gamecocks make them pay as Jalen Dickerson and Rodriguez Fitton come around the edge. Big loss. Well, South Carolina felt as if they could get some pressure. That time, you're running a heavy play action. And Justin Schaefer pulls from left guard, doesn't block anybody. Gets over there to the right side of the offensive front and allows Fitton to just slip his block and get upfield. As you mentioned, they also brought second level pressure. It's a loss of six on the play. Daniels will try the right sideline and that is caught by George Pickens. Incredible catch on a one-on-one -on -one ball over John Dixon. Well, South Carolina's down some cornerbacks. A couple of guys opting out. JT Daniels throwing at John Dixon and George Pickens. In his first game back last week, had eight catches. Goes up. He's so competitive in the air. Great job of shielding the ball away from the defender with his body, high pointing it and fighting it all the way to the ground. Nobody can question his talent. This is Kenny McIntosh, and McIntosh will get maybe a yard. The defense, as you mentioned, Stench, is a mash unit. They've had all sorts of injuries and opt-outs to deal with, health issues to every team has gone through. You don't see Keir Thomas, Jabari Ellis, or J.J. Inekbari tonight out there on that defensive line. And you're talking about, you know, of the 12 sacks, the negative yardage type plays, that's nine and a half of your best pass rushers. Nine and a half sacks that aren't represented on the field today. Daniels throws again to Pickens and George will get inside the 10 down near the 8 where he's tackled by Jalen Foster. He missed Pickens the Kentucky in the Florida game back last week and had a big one against the Mississippi State. Well, Tom Munkin talked about him. He's a really talented kid. The guy that they want to continue to develop more consistency. He said you can't just run go routes and hitches. Something that he's going to refine those routes better. Looked like I thought Pickens picked up the yardage needed instead of third and short. The give to White. White inside the eight down near the seven. First and goal, Georgia. Missed opportunity that time for South Carolina because Jabari Ellis was able to get upfield quickly, number 99, and make Samir White kind of bubble that run, bend it away from the line of scrimmage briefly, and take it a little bit wider. White was able to get the yardage needed to get the conversion. Back to White. White goes right at that front. And like you said, Ellis is in there tonight, but the pass rushers are not. Thomas and Annie Nagbury are not in the game tonight. And you combine that with the injuries and the opt-outs they've had in the secondary. And now we have another wow, and Ellis. That, that is Ellis. Yeah, I mean, a guy that, you know, they've already moved over guys. You know, Jordan Rhodes, we'll probably see him tonight some. Number 76, former offensive lineman. He's going to play defensive line today. And, you know, when you look at it, it it's, it's one of those issues where, especially versus a physical front, you can't afford to come in shorthanded. Jabari Ellis, a guy that was one of the names that popped up repeatedly in talking with the coaches, See, big body, 285 pounds. 
kind of got rolled up a little bit on the inside run. They just can't afford to lose any bodies along that front in this game. You're talking about Rhodes having to go to the defensive side of the ball. Zaquandre White, who's a tailback, who's been going back and forth from running back to linebacker the last couple of years. He's had to switch back for Coach Bobo and Travaris Robinson's defense. Second and goal, Georgia. From the six-yard line, James Cook is back in the game. And this is a toss to Cook. Easy around the left side. Touchdown. He's learning how to be a tailback. He is one heck of an athlete. He's definitely got this run play down. As you see, once again, a couple of fold schemes. Pin and pull at the point of attack. Where you create angles, get down blocks, and then you pull big bodies out in front. Just like the long run that Cook hit earlier. This time to the left side of the formation. Again, into the boundary. And that time ending in the end zone. Hudlesny with the extra point. Nine plays, 82 yards. And a bunch of people looking like Matt Stinchko pushing James Cook into the end zone. All Georgia Bulldogs in the first. It's Chevy Truck Month. It's Deck Building Month. It's Toy Hauling Month. It's Explore New Ground Month. It's the month to get things done. Make it your own and make every month Chevy Truck Month. Get a total value of $6,000 on this 2020 Silverado Texas Edition. Plus, now during Truck Month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance towards the purchase of eligible accessories. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. This Thanksgiving, we're thankful for you. And to show our appreciation, we're bringing you the ultimate Thanksgiving free preview weekend so you can enjoy heart-stopping action movies, captivating drama series, and hilarious comedies. Browse four premium networks for free from November 25th to the 29th. Between HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, and Epix, you'll have access to the best shows and movies this holiday weekend. Don't miss the Thanksgiving free preview from November 25th to the 29th. You know, James Cook may not possess the stats of a big-time college tailback, but he possesses all of the talents that you need at the next level these days, being able to catch a ball out of the backfield and run it when you need to as well. 14-0 Georgia here in the early going. Yeah, you know, Todd Munkin said when he was with the Bucs, they looked really hard at his older brother, Dalvin Cook. So he thinks James Cook has more skills than him, just not as good of a run. Well, South Carolina's had a lot of opt-outs so far this season, but not from Sedarius Hutcherson. When the offensive lineman was asked this week about staying here, here's what he said. It just wouldn't be right for me to leave. And um, 
at the end of the day, I'm finishing out. I was raised that way. My mom and dad always raised me to finish finish anything that I started. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish these last two games like a man, regardless of we win or lose. But I'm not going to trade these guys for anything in the world. I know that means a ton to any team, guys, who's going through anything like this, a coaching change with just a couple of games left in the season. Mike Bobo, though, not surprised, saying that's just who Sidarius is. He's a leader. He boy is he as Doty is run out of bounds to, to get a yard. And, and Stinch, this isn't a shot at the guys that did decide to leave. Each situation is different. And in this COVID time that we're living in, no one's passing judgment. We know this, though. Sedarius Hutcherson will be proud of the decision he made for the rest of his life. Well, it's definitely a team-oriented decision, no doubt. Selfless to stick it out like this and finish what he started. And the second and nine. That's caught by Jalen Brooks with Shai Smith out of the lineup due to a concussion. Xavier Leggett out as well. Jalen Brooks might become South Carolina's go-to receiver in these final two games. He was kind of plagued by drops when he first got back out there on the field. That can be expected, you know, anticipated, knowing that he had been on the shelf, wasn't eligible to play, but he is the deep threat. He is the one that can stretch the defense if we see any downfield throws. Under center goes Doty. In trouble, tries to throw it back to Harris, but he's under heavy pressure in the backfield, and that is Jalen Carter forcing the fourth down. Well, Jalen Carter, it looked like he was clearly going to chase the fake to DeCarry and Jordan, and then he comes off of it, realized that Doty still had the football. They were trying to set up a screen back to the left side of the formation. Instead, Carter hits Doty with the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. <laughs> Jordan Davis not being able to play tonight, and Jalen Carter, the true freshman, picking up the slack. Fair catch made by Kiaris Jackson just outside the 20-yard line. Tonight we'll have SEC football final hosted by Dari Noko with Gene Chizik and Chris Doring. They'll take you through the biggest stories from the day and break all the college football games down. It's at 10.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Is Doring really going to make it back for that tonight after calling the Gators and the Kentucky Wildcats today? How personal is Chris Doring? Ah, man. I'll tell you what, bet they were glad to have him down there in the swamp. They probably felt like they needed him there in the first half. Yeah. Kind of tough sledding for the Gators early on versus Kentucky until they got that punt return. Trask and company got it going. Georgia's having no trouble in the first quarter here. Another carry to White. JT Daniels just looked great since the first two drives. Five of six, 74 yards and a touchdown. And this is really what the offense is to look like. You know, you see Zamir White. Man, the yards after contact in this game already. Another tough run for him and by him. As you see, Ernest Jones down on the field for South Carolina. The frustration showing. He is the leader of that defense. Without any question. Came into the game, leading tackler. 85 total tackles coming into this one. A little nicked up, it looks like. Let's go back down to the field and Alyssa. You guys were talking about JT Daniels and just how excited Georgia fans are to see him play again. Well, Kirby Smart described JT as type A, says he asks questions about literally everything all the time to the point where he drives offensive coordinator Todd Monk in crazy. So obviously we had to ask what kinds of questions. He said, they're so specific and so many, I can't even think of an example, but he asks a lot. He is always dialed in. <laughs> It was Munkin was just shaking his head at how prepared he is with another handoff to White to the point where you could argue that he's over prepared, just has this incredible obsession with the game. And in fact, Todd said that the only other quarterback that does this kind of film work and understands the game that he's been around is Ryan Fitzpatrick, the Ivy League grad playing for the Dolphins. Yeah, that's a big brain to be compared to. Good looking beard. Starting tomorrow for the Jets to his yeah. thumb is banged up. This is a handoff to McIntosh, and McIntosh has the first down as he as a pile carries him past the 45 yard line. Boy, Georgia just going right at that South Carolina front. That's 13 more. Yeah, split zone. Watch Trey McKitty on the back side. Nice push. Nice push right at the point of attack. Unsurprising. You know, we talked about it coming into this one. Kind of a skeleton crew defensively for South Carolina and Georgia certainly taking advantage of that 
Some strong runs, some nice holes on the inside. McIntosh again with wide open space in front of him. Cuts it back inside the 25, down near the 20 before he's finally tackled. Big gain for the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. It's 34 yards. It's pretty good vision. You see him nice cut back. That hole was about four yards wide, right along the line of scrimmage. These running backs, they're getting free entry into the heart of that South Carolina defensive front. White out, Macin or excuse me, McIntosh out, White back in. And here's Zamir. And look how wide open that space is. Just the easiest touchdown you'll ever see. 22 yards for Zamir White. Nice backside cut on another zone run. Really nice push along the front. Watch him see it on the backside. See the backside hole open up. Mike Salyer did a great job getting up. JT Daniels knows it. He didn't run the football well last week versus Mississippi State. They're going to do so tonight. Only eight yards rushing last week against Mississippi State. Already 151 in the first quarter. Zamir White had been doing a lot of workhorse carries already early on in this game. And it felt like what he's going to do is just going to wind this run back. You see the zone. All those offensive linemen are going to step to their right. Watch him wind it back. Good job by Salyer getting up on the second level, covering up linebackers. I'm not sure Zamir White was touched on that touchdown run. That's an offensive front for Georgia that was probably embarrassed a week ago. They protected relatively well. But they did not run block well at all. And they didn't handle the movement of that Mississippi State defensive front. And it undid a rushing attack that was intended to complement JT Daniels in his first start coming back. They are definitely asserting themselves and taking advantage of some of the deficiencies of the South Carolina personnel. And Kirby Smart said we were running the ball somewhat effectively early in the game and, and got away from it. I wonder if that was due to JT in his first game trying to feel things out. Nevertheless, back on track is that one. I think we've had a clean kickoff yet. I think we've had a flag on, on every kickoff so far. 100%. This will be marked at the 35 yard line. Free kick out of bounds, kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. You know, we showed at the beginning of the game Israel Mukwamu's pick six. He had three interceptions in that win against Georgia last year, and Will Muschamp celebrating. Both those guys are gone. Jake Fromm, of course, gone on this other sideline. So many faces have changed. Now you've got Mike Bobo as the interim head coach against his old team tonight. And the Gamecocks shorthanded doesn't even have any, it doesn't even suggest how bad the situation has been for South Carolina in 2020. It's a quick throw out of the backfield. It goes to Josh Van, and Van will get past the 40-yard line. Nice play design that time. Get the ball outside. As you can see, Coach Bobo has been around the game a long time. The head coach of Colorado State for five years. To the ground, and Harris bouncing off Georgia defenders. First down, Gamecocks. That run from Kevin Harris. We talked about him at the top. The top rushers in the conference, the most physical runner in the conference. I'd co-sign on that. Nowhere to come, nowhere to go at the point of attack. And they're bouncing off the would-be tacklers. That's the second time he's come up and bumped Christopher Smith. 29 for Georgia. Getting a mouthful of number 20 a couple of times now. Doty, little trickeration back to, her, to Doty. Down the field, caught inside the 20 yard line. It's Nick Muse, the tight end. And why not? You hadn't done much offensively. Hand off, fake reserve, reverse, flea flicker. 
to your second leading, at least available receiver, and Nick Muse, tight end. Now to the ground in Harris. And Harris shoves Eric Stokes after a pickup of a few. That was a 35-yard play that put them in this position. We talked about it at the top. The keys, get a takeaway defensively. I hadn't seen that, but you got to take shots on offense, and now they're in the red zone. Quick throw, it's Brooks with Muse blocking in front. First and goal, Gamecocks. Great job by Brooks breaking that first tackle. He picked up another four yards, and you can see South Carolina trying to stay tempo. Harris. And he's wrestled down at the two after a pickup of a couple. Is that's Lewis seen with the tackle. Yeah, if there's going to be a safety coming up to make a tackle on Kevin Harris, Lewis seen's not a bad option. As you see him, pretty violent looking tackles. You see Kevin Harris trying to say, hey man, horse collar right there? No, it's a clean tackle. Not always a good idea to go up high on number 20. Doty keeps it himself. Try the edge to the pylon. Marked out short of the goal line. Dangerous there at the end of the run as Monty Rice was able to race Doty to that corner of the end zone in the pylon as the quarter expires. What an answer in this drive offensively for South Carolina. Short of the goal line. That is the end of the first quarter. Let's we'll see if they take another look at this. Kirby Smart's offense was fantastic in the first frame. Gashing South Carolina play by play down the field. The Gamecocks are on the doorstep at the end of one here at williams Bryce Stadium. Luke Doty trying to give the Gamecocks some points.
Dogs up big, 21-0 at the end of the first, but the Gamecocks are on the doorstep at the one-yard line. They had to go 98 yards from one one-yard line to the other at the end of the first quarter. Stench, what does Luke Doty and the Gamecocks, what do they do here on this third and goal from the one? Well, as we mentioned, one of the most physical runners, a full house backfield. And the give goes to Harris easily into the end zone, following those two fullbacks. Adam Prentice and Javon Gwynn both lined up in the backfield. They lined up in this formation last week. They moved Sedarius Hutcherson over to the right side, bringing an extra lineman and allowed Javon Gwynn to be a lead blocker, thought to be the strongest player on the South Carolina roster. And it's fitting that Kevin Harris is able to bull his way into the end zone. Eight plays, 65 yards, one of the best in Gamecocks history, Parker White, with the extra point. Look at the point, really well blocked. Kevin Harris could have walked into the end zone. You see Vazir Stackhouse in there for Georgia. Georgia down a couple of D-linemen. Jordan Davis, unlikely to play in this game. And this Kevin Harris kid, boy, has he been impressive. He started the season early, 88-yard run versus Vanderbilt, showing the speed that he has. And he's been pretty physical early on in this game. Kirby Smart says he's the best downfield runner in the Southeastern Conference. Certainly has had a terrific season in what has been a dark spot in 2020 for South Carolina with only the two wins. It's not fair to give your old buddy Mike Bobo that much time to call up a play, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was an impressive drive, an important drive. You know, your defense just got run right through. How do you answer? You only had 11 yards of offense before that drive. That was an impressive, creative play calling. And Luke Doty did a good job, four or five, 55 yards to get him on the doorstep. Jeter again kicks it out of bounds. That's the third one we've had. Two for South Carolina and one for Georgia so far in this game. Maybe over the Thanksgiving break, did they narrow the field or something? Free kick out of bounds, kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. It's all the dressing stench. It just it just gets to your head. It makes you kick sideways, I guess. I'll tell you what. Check out the women's soccer team. That's right. It's somebody else to kick off. It worked out for Vandy today. What a story that is. That was impressive. A historic day in college football, to be sure. And Sarah Fuller did a good job kicking off. She kicked it to the 35-yard line. Yeah, kept it in bounds. On purpose. Now Daniels back on offense. Play action. He wants to load up, throwing the deep ball. Under throws Jermaine Burton, who was wide open. We saw that a couple of times. Even last week, as many deep shots as Georgia hit, a couple of under throws. You see Burton, he's running open. And he was kind of checking up on his route because he could tell that ball was going to be a little bit behind him. JT Daniels just didn't get enough on that throw. Otherwise, Burton makes it to the end zone if he hits it in stride. Second and 10. And the handoff goes to Cook. And he's straight ahead with a big hole. It'll be third and short for Kirby Smart's offense. An injured Bulldog down there, Jamari Sawyer. Kirby. With the two losses, is remind Bulldogs fans how much they have played for in the five years he's been the head coach. And I know the big issue this year has been quarterback play. He said we needed to get JT Daniels under our care. The guy didn't arrive on campus until August. Had to see him practice a bit before he could really know what kind of quarterback he had. We'll talk more about Daniels in just a moment as they check on Sawyer. Timeout on the field. It's Chevy Truck Month. It's Deck Building Month. It's Toy Hauling Month. It's Explore New Ground Month. It's the month to get things done. Make it your own and make every month Chevy Truck Month. 
Get a total value of $6,000 on this 2020 Silverado Texas Edition. Plus, now during truck month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance towards the purchase of eligible accessories. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Can I get some more cheese with a flatbread? What happened? I don't know. It just keeps disappearing. You know what they say, bone eats first. Some of you know that I love cooking, but I don't have the time to spend forever in the kitchen. I have like three jobs and two kids. I'm always thinking about how to get fresh veggies into my kids' bellies without any drama. You know I love drama, which is not at mealtime. With HelloFresh, I don't even have to think about it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code YUMMY90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale. Jamari Sawyer off of the field. Xavier Trust coming in at left tackle for Kirby Smart on offense on this third and four for Georgia. His quarterback, JT Daniels, has been outstanding on third downs in his first two games. He's three of three tonight. Has to get to the 45-yard line. Well, work the back out of the backfield. You got James Cook in there as well. Daniels with all kinds of time, takes too much time, and finally is sacked by Zach Pickens. Well, that's a bad play by JT Daniels. Not only do you flush right into this rush, Warren McClendon, the pocket is not, you don't have to escape right there, and you actually had James Cook. Get rid of the football. Get you're running back with the ball in space, a chance to make a play. He wanted more, pulls it down, and Pickens with a big sack and a negative yardage play. Jake Camardo with a booming punt. He's only had two returned all season because he puts him so high in the sky, and he does it again there. It's a 50-yard punt with no return. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. How can South Carolina's offense maintain that momentum? They did a great job on first downs that last drive. Setting themselves up, staying ahead of the down and distance, setting themselves up with second and five so that they could maintain that momentum on the heels of a big defensive stop. Kevin Harris comes back after the touchdown run. Standing next to Doty and takes the handoff. And he's tackled after a couple. It'll be second down. Stinch, how would you describe Mike Bobo as a play caller, a guy that was the Georgia quarterback for four years, an offensive coordinator there forever, and now the head coach and play caller for the Gamecocks? Well, you know, a lot of plays lead to other plays. You'll see you'll see a fake off of a play that hit earlier or a play that didn't hit. They'll run a fake Q counter and run a sweep opposite. Everything stacks up and adds up to something else. Fake to Harris. Doty steps up, throws a one-on-one -on -one ball to Muse, and here comes the flag. That's Lewis seen. Kirby Smart doesn't like it. Well, they ran heavy play action, and Javon Quinn got all tripped up. Pass interference, defense number 16. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot with an automatic first down. 
So you got a matchup with Nick Muse covered by a safety. I don't see P.I. there. That looks like a well-played ball in the air by Seam. Yeah, the ball's really high. Both of them are going up for it. I, I don't see where there could have been a P.I. Right. Oftentimes you see coaches who are on the receiving end of those penalties argue against it. That time it looked like it was warranted regardless. P.I. giving them a fresh set of downs and picking up a free 15. At the 40-yard line. Back to Harris again. Kevin, first down run into Georgia territory. That's one of their best run concepts. They're able to pull a couple of linemen. Call it the moon sweep. It's the old buck sweep. Get your two guards or guard and center out in front. Same play again. 13 yards on the last one, and this one goes inside the 40. Nice play on first down. It's funny how that terminology has changed as the years have gone on, Stinch, whether you call it a buck sweep or a moon sweep or whatever you call it. It's it's timeless, isn't it? Well, it's all these guys that come out of the same kind of coaching tree. And, you know, the, they call it the moon sweep at Georgia because they learned it when Kirby Smart was coaching under Saban. Out of the game goes Harris, and into the game goes Rashad Amos, the freshman from Fayetteville, Georgia, pressed into action after Zaquandri White had to switch sides of the field and play some defense. He'll get some carries tonight with Deshaun Fenwick. How about that play design? A delayed handoff, wait for the defense to react out wide, and then run a draw right up the middle. to the Georgia 35-yard line. Amos still in the in the game, and it's a design quarterback run for Doty, and he's tripped up in the backfield as Zion Logue and Malik Herring got an arm on him. You know, Kirby Smart was saying, going from playing Mississippi State to South Carolina, conceptually on offense is as big a transition as you can make in college football from one week to the next. Yeah, I mean, you got one team that almost never runs the football, throws it almost exclusively, and then of course Coach Bobo, he's got to run, you'll see a tight end, you'll see eye formations, which is something that I'm sure a lot of these defensive players for Georgia, they might not have ever seen an eye formation. Now we see another whistle. False start. Number five. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And I think that those that have been college football fans for a long time are so conditioned to an I formation. Stitch, you don't almost ever see huddles in quarterbacks under center. And on the touchdown run, we saw a fullback. Yeah, isn't that something? I mean, that, that's a legal formation. There's sometimes <laughs> we saw two fullbacks, right? A full house backfield, even. It's just something that forces defense to play left-handed. They're not built for those types of personnel groupings anymore. Then Second. you add in a running quarterback. Second and 15 now. Doty underneath wise throw to Harris. Gets something Harry out Harris of nothing past that. the original line of scrimmage. Rice, Tackled by Rice. Uh, you know, we talk about Kevin Harris as a runner, but as a receiver as well, probably unheralded. Came into this game with 16 receptions, something that's part of Mike Bobo's offensive philosophy. Those running back positions, not just a ball carrier. You're going to be a receiver out of the backfield. Third and long. We've already seen there. Doty narrowly getting that football off. Georgia, the best team at pressuring the passer in the Southeastern Conference. And this is an obvious pass again. Underneath, Harris breaking tackles, first down. Well, there it is. It was meet me at the quarterback for the Georgia defense. Doty stands in, checks it down to his back. Poor tackling. Nazir Stackhouse just sliding off of Kevin Harris, who battles his way to the first down. Amos back into the game, trying the right side, and he'll get a few. It'll be second down, tackled by Eric Stokes. Mention Amos in there. No Deshaun Fenwick available for South Carolina in the offensive backfield. No Shy Smith in the top receivers in the Southeastern Conference. 
South Carolina lost him on their second series, only the sixth play of the game last week. At 54 catches for the Gamecock offense. Amos again, this won't work. That's a loss on the play as Quay Walker comes in there to make the tackle. It'll be third down. They're trying to get the ball outside. The Georgia defensive front, they don't cede any ground and allows Quay Walker to run untouched. It's almost like a ball carrier. He's able to get into that offensive backfield. Nobody impeding his progress to get to the ball carrier. Well, South Carolina is going to be a run first team, but as you said, this is another obvious passing down, another underneath throw, and it's incomplete into traffic looking for Josh Van. It's fourth down. Could have had a chance on that one, and Doty was high with the ball. Trying to get the ball to Van on a tunnel screen. Georgia brought pressure. They end up bringing six defenders. See him get upfield. If he catches that cleanly and underneath, Van's got a chance to pick up a first down and more. Instead, Doty too high, too hot with that throw. Parker White to try this 40-yard field goal to make it an 11-point game. Fifth-year senior from Mount Pleasant. He's had an outstanding career. He's got one heck of a leg. 21-10 is the score between these old SEC rivals and williams Bryce Stadium. Toyota-thon is... Oh, wait. Toyota-thon is on. Come in today. During Toyota-thon, get $1,000 customer cash on a stylish new 2021 Corolla. That's a wrap. Toyota, let's go places. This Thanksgiving, HBO Max invites you to enjoy HBO for free. Oh, here we go. Let's get together. Plus, discover a special collection of exclusive Max Originals on demand. <laughs> All Ooh. for free. Whoa. During the HBO Max free preview event, November 25th through the 29th. This is very exciting. You ready? Oh, yeah. Experience amazing shows and movies during the HBO Max free preview event. Twenty-one ten, the new score between these old rivals. It even predates them both being in the same conference. Forty years ago was one of the best moments in it. Today you'll see two of the top running backs in the country, George Rogers, South Carolina, and Herschel Walker, Georgia. And they run a track with Herschel Walker. Got a hole by 35, 40, 45, 50. There goes Herschel. There goes Herschel. Herschel had the best day. Rodgers won the Heisman Trophy. Herschel and the Dogs won the game and the national championship. You see George's numbers over 5,200 total rushing yards in his four terrific years for the Gamecocks. And we got Munson and Keith Jackson in the same That's call. That's amazing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, two Heisman Trophy winning tailbacks <laughs> and two Hall of Fame broadcasters. This is Jackson coming out. Wise decision. 
past the 30-yard line. Usually those don't pay off. This one does as he gets all the way up near the 35. Jackson and the Bulldogs have had one of the best kickoff teams in college football this year in terms of return yardage. Jackson, not just as a return man, kind of paced that wide receiver core for Georgia. Took some time to get Jermaine Burton as a true freshman kind of up on his skis in this offense. They moved Jackson into the slot. Obviously, George Pickens missing a couple of games, slowed things down. Here's Jackson with 31 catches coming into the night. He had been the main contributor in the passing game. McIntosh, no place to go. Somehow gets something out of nothing. Alyssa, I see Jamari Sawyer back out there. Walking around on the sidelines and really testing that right leg. He was limping on it for the first few minutes. Like I said, in and out of the injury tent, did some jogging, got down in his stance. He's back out there, but I keep an eye on his position. Yeah, it, it didn't look like there was much. Like he got rolled up a little bit, maybe on his ankle. It looked at first like they were assessing his knee. Good to see him back out on the football field. Nice pickup of six yards by McIntosh on that play. Now it's Zamir White, and just look at that hole. By the time he has the football is already a wide open space in front of him that's a 10-yard game just a huge hole the left side of the offensive front behind salier look at him cover up does a great job of climbing muhammad kava in there at linebacker the short-handed at linebacker as well as south carolina two freshmen and when you get untouched all the way up to the safety jamie robinson making business decisions to tackle in there white once again white Getting inside the 45, down to the 44. There's no question that if Georgia's going to be successful, not just this season, but into the future, that their ground game must be great, combined with a terrific quarterback. Zamir White, James Cook, and Kenny McIntosh, all underclassmen, though Cook is a junior, and Zamir White is a redshirt sophomore. And they needed to be better. Need to be better on first and second down coming into the night. Average the longest distance to go on third downs with seven and a half of any team in the conference. White out, McIntosh in, and tackled immediately by Kaba. No gain, third down. That time, Kaba does a great job getting outside. See, once again, Pulling lineman, Trey Hill, Jamari Sawyer. Trey Hill doesn't get all the way outside. Kind of lays a hand on Kaba, otherwise untouched. No game. They set up this third and five. Sticking on the ground, easy first down for James Cook. He did step out of bounds at the 32-yard line. All three of the Georgia tailbacks being used on this possession. We talked about it on a previous third down. James Cook in there could be a receiver. Could hand it off to him on a third and five. You usually get light boxes, fewer defenders in the tackle box. From tackle to tackle, you get an opportunity to pop a run as Georgia did there. 14-yard pickup for the junior from Miami. Fake to James this time, and it's to Pickens, who had trouble making that catch at first. Grabs it at the 29-yard line. So Pickens gesturing to the sideline. Hey, what are we going to do? They fake the zone. DT Daniels flips it out there. Pickens, he was looking to make a move before he had that ball all the way looked in. It's run after the catch, something that Todd Munkin talked about. That's something that Pickens has focused on, getting those yards after the catch. Talent is not the issue. It's learning how to play the position fully. How about James Cook? Nobody touches him. Touchdown, Bulldogs. I don't know that James Cook has to deviate at all. He runs right down the hash. There's just nobody there. 
It's a great job along the line of scrimmage. Repeatedly, the Georgia front creating enormous holes for these running backs to run through. 29-yard run to the end zone. And after the game, Cox had scored 10 unanswered. Offensive coordinator Todd Munkin goes to the ground six of seven times on the drive, culminating with the touchdown run by the junior from Miami. All Georgia in the first half. Dear Laura. Dear Stephen. Dear Shannon. Thank you so much for ordering with same day delivery. We know it has been a hard year, yet your loyalty to Hollywood Feed hasn't changed. As always, we will continue to help and serve you during the holiday season. Thank you for not giving up on us, your pets, or our community. A family sticks together, and you are a part of the Hollywood Feed family. We are in this together. Your local Hollywood Feed. This Thanksgiving, HBO Max invites you to enjoy HBO for free. Oh, here we go. Let's get together. Plus, discover a special collection of exclusive Max Originals on demand. <laughs> All Ooh. for free. Whoa. During the HBO Max free preview event, November 25th through the 29th. This is very exciting. You ready? Oh, yeah. Experience amazing shows and movies during the HBO Max free preview event. Bulldogs only had eight rushing yards last week in the victory over Mississippi State. They have 208 in the first half against South Carolina tonight. James Cook is near the 100-yard mark and has two touchdowns. It's been quite a night for Cook. Five touches, 90 yards, a couple touchdowns, explosive runs. And as good as the backs have looked, credit that offensive front because they have created enormous holes all night long. Gamecocks will start at the 25-yard line. How wide open was this, was this hole here? Yeah, they're just doing such a good job. Watch the back side. They're just going to work hats on hats. And you watch these defenders at the second level, they're just getting covered up. You see right here, late leak on the linebackers. Linebackers are covered. The defensive linemen are getting displaced and the running backs are just running full head of steam. Not seeing guys having to throw any moves in the backfield. It's just run the football, bang your head on the goalpost. Well, last two drives, South Carolina's had in them offense have resulted in points. See if Mike Bobo, Kevin Harris, and Luke Doty can do it again. Going to the ground for four more. Aided a little bit by that pass interference on the previous drive. But regardless, 11 plays, 57 yards, results in that field goal. 
and it was set up because of efficient plays on first down, just like the one they got from Kevin Harris on that opening run. Doty throws a little quick pass to the sideline, and it's caught by Jakari Jakari Caldwell, just short of the first down. It'll be third and one. Jakari Caldwell, another guy, true freshman, impressed in the service. There is Brian Edwards, record-setting receiver, his number. What a career he had. Doty hands it to Harris, and Harris looks like he's short. He is half a yard short. It's fourth down. Now, I know that Coach Bobo wants to be aggressive tonight. It's 28 to 10. South Carolina only has two wins on the season. And he said, we're going to go for it a bunch tonight. Does he do it in the first half with half a yard to go on his own 34-yard line? When we're talking with Kirby Smart, we're saying, what's it like coaching opposite a situation like this? Coaches in an interim status. We're saying, look. You know, what do we got to lose? We rolled the dice here. You're at fourth and what? Not even a foot. We didn't see him come out and measure. He's going to call timeout and think about it here. We'll see what he decides in just a moment. I'm going to play outside. Be back before. Before Chuck, I know. Experience amazing. We love HelloFresh. It's so easy and delicious every single time. And we get to try new things. James D, we're going to make some pork sausage spaghetti bolognese. Can you say bolognese? Bolognese. Mm. ready. Wow. How is it? It's really good. I tried the spaghetti. You like it, my George? I think that's a yes. <laughs> Use code YUM90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale. Regions Bank Halftime Report coming up in a moment. Dari Noka, Gene Chizik, Sarah Fuller's history, what it ultimately means. Also, the Iron Bowl, one-sided yet again. How about Georgia offensively? They're going to win Saturday's stud for you, Chiz. Not eight yards rushing this week. No. 208 Woo. as of right now. Yes, indeed. Boys, we'll see you in a few. Dari and Chiz, the Gamecocks are going for it on their own 34-yard line in the first half. Down 28 to 10. Mike Bobo figuring this is the only way he can beat his alma mater. Playing keep away. Hands to Harris. No way. Not even close. Oh. Now Harris with the second effort. Wow. There was never a whistle. The dogs gave up on the tackle, and Harris got it. He was stopped. Except he wasn't. Look at this penetration. 
Ojolari just slides right down. Didn't play Luke Doty at all on the keep, which is what they were counting on. What an effort by Kevin Harris. It sure was. Harris gets maybe a yard on the next play. Ojolari and Monty Rice both came in there, and Harris slips out of Ojolari's hands to give the Gamecocks new life. And South Carolina does get the football first in the second half. So there's a real chance Georgia doesn't see the ball again if South Carolina can continue this drive. Back-to-back so -back possessions is what you're trying to get. And also deny the other team's offense a chance at your own end zone again. Underneath throw to Harris. As they continue to get it to their best playmaker. And Harris tackled in space by Tyreek Stevenson. It'll be third down, clock still running. Good job, man. just checks it down. Harris out there, swing pass, right out of the backfield. Stevenson, that's a load. The Tyreek Stevenson's coming up to try to make a tackle on and Kevin Harris. Still, what an effort on that fourth and short. Third and four. Gamecocks just two of six on this play tonight. Doty slips a tackle. Gets out of bounds up at the 46-yard line. That's enough for a first down. This is the old version of a run-pass option. All these sprint outs. Boy, am I got a favorable spot there right on the line of school, right at the boundary. They're going quick. Well, he tried to get it off, but yeah. I think they're going to take a look. He may have gotten it, but it's close. As the runner made the first down, the previous play is under further review. You can see, I think you can hear Bo, Mike Bobo saying, "Whoa, I can't! I think we got that ball off before you stopped play." And I got to tell you, Taylor, it did. It looked almost like South Carolina got this next play off. But you see, Doty, watch him tightrope down the boundary extended the ball i don't know that he did it looks like he kept it tight in his right arm he's got a high and tight there kind of loose for a little moment ah, it's tough to tell i don't know that you've got enough i think initially kirby smart and the georgia yeah. staff was probably wondering if he stepped out at the 44 it didn't appear so, and like you said, Stinch, doesn't look like there's enough to overturn it. You would think the call stands, although the season we're having with these no, predictions yeah. on the calls, maybe we'll just that was sit back and watch. I can't believe you even went out on that one. <laughs> That's a rickety branch. <laughs> After review, the ruling on the field stands. All right. First down, South Carolina. We got one right. We miss you, Matt Austin. <laughs> you were due. We were due. Yeah, I gotta tell you, it looked like South Carolina got that next playoff before they stopped. But he had to get to the 46. You see the change, you're dropping the chains there. He's inbounds, he's out of bounds, but that ball right there, the 46 yard line. It's a good call out there on the field, I believe. So Gamecocks keep it with 113 to go. First down. Now Amos in the backfield. Doty in trouble, gets rid of it right at the last second. And Rashad gets past midfield. Boy, Doty took a hit from two Georgia defenders. He doesn't lack for courage. That's a couple of times where he's gotten sandwiched in the backfield. Checked it down again. They were trying to get it to Jalen Brooks over the middle. Couldn't get it downfield. And yeah, he gets grilled once again. Ravain Johnson low in the boom. This is Muse. First down, Gamecocks out of bounds inside the 40. They're saying they want to get the ball more to Nick Muse. They have to. No Shy Smith. He is their most reliable receiving option. It's come up big a couple of times. Continuing to go quick and just taking what the defense gives Doty. All these underneath throws. South Carolina is so limited by downfield receivers due to opt outs and injuries. So instead, use the tight end, use your backs out of the backfield. Doty's done a good job of that so far tonight. 10 of 12 passing here in the first half. 
Under pressure, and he's tackled down near the 30 at the 31-yard line. Timeout, Gamecocks with 49 seconds left. That time, excellent coverage downfield. Nowhere to go with the football. And we saw last week, Luke Doty, how effective he can be when he's innovating, scrambling, extending plays. Second down, a couple of nice runs versus Missouri just to keep drives alive. I haven't seen a ton of runs from him here tonight, but you can see that he can be elusive. Marty Smith and Ryan McGee, our good friends, have some fun and talk everything SEC Wednesday at 2 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. A little afternoon special from Marty and McGee this Wednesday. Luke Doty's looking pretty good out there tonight, Alyssa. It's about some of those challenges that Georgia has, certainly defensively, preparing for Mississippi State one week, then South Carolina the next week. Not a lot of sample size from Luke Doty, just that second half against Missouri. Kirby Smart said they had to pull his high school tape to prepare for him. From the 31-yard line on third and two, he's going to be tackled short of the line to gain. He was trying to take it himself, but gets tackled by Nolan Smith. I'm surprised the flag didn't come out right there. Well, one of two things happened because South Carolina moved early along the offensive front, but only after Georgia did this defensive line shift, something that they always do. But there was definitely movement before the snap. And South Carolina waited until there was 30 seconds left to call that final timeout. Let's look again at what you're talking about here. Well, I mean, there's no question that there's movement early. And a lot of times, what that's elicited, it's caused by that shift along the, off, the defensive front. Georgia does a lot. They get a lot of teams to jump, but there's no question that there was early movement. No flag came out. It's a little surprising that Coach Bobo called that timeout with 30 seconds left. I thought he might let the clock run down to attempt a last-second field goal here. Instead, calls timeout and appears he'll keep the offense on the field and still try to see if he can get a chance to get six points instead of three. Of course, you run the risk of getting nothing if you don't get the first down here. Exactly, but makes more sense why he would have called the timeout earlier. If you're thinking you're going to just try to knock one through the uprights, instead, he wants to have multiple cracks at the end zone. And now Georgia will call timeout. First charge time of the half, Georgia. 30 seconds. Down to the field for our favorite promo of the night. Is that thinking out loud? It yes, sure I think it is. Guys, Monday nights, I know you're always DVRing it if you're not watching it live. 7 o'clock Eastern time on the SEC Network. Join me, Richard Johnson, Brandon Boykin, and Spencer Hall. It's an hour of nothing but SEC talk. Yeah, we take you outside the conference a little bit. Got to catch up on college football playoff talk, but it's the most fun hour easily of your entire Monday through Friday. Come hang out with us. You won't regret it. I don't know if Stinch can tell he crossing out the loud and right in Lang, thinking out Lang, <laughs> Monday right. nights at 7 Eastern time. Of course we're watching. You're usually texting us, Alyssa, while the show's going on. Alyssa has more TV shows than anybody in the company now. She's got two of them. Darn right. They're highly rated, too. That's incidentally. right. That's absolutely Let's see if they go back to Kevin Harris. It was a second effort last time on the fourth and short by number 20. And now a false start. That's big. False start, offense number 89. Five yard penalty, so fourth down. And it's the second time a South Carolina receiver has gotten a procedure penalty. Before it was to carry and Joyner that was early, and now Jakari Caldwell. You have to wonder what the play call was. I almost think they might have been thinking to take a shot. Otherwise, there's no reason as a receiver, if you're going to hand the ball off, and run it right up the middle why you would need an early start. Now, Parker White's got plenty of leg to get it there, but this would be a career long. 53 yards. And he hooked it too much.
say that about five times around. <laughs> That's right. Man, what a huge penalty. I mean, you take the timeout early, as you mentioned, thinking you want to extend the drive. I, I got to think that South Carolina had a shot play called right there. Because you're fourth and short, you're all geared up. I didn't see the move. I didn't see the motion. I had seven up on the line, it appeared. Well, 25 seconds to go. Georgia does have two timeouts, and they're throwing the football. Burton, first down, up past the 45 to the 46 with 17 seconds left. Burton with a career day last week versus Mississippi State. Eight catches exploded, really, in that football game. Almost 200 receiving yards, a couple of touchdowns. Georgia does use their second timeout. Yeah, he was the SEC Freshman of the Week last week with that performance. Well, he was a guy that Todd Munkin and the coaching staff, they were all saying, look, the guy's too good of an athlete. His body control is what really stood out. we got to find a way to get him on the field. Start moving guys around. That's how Kyrus Jackson ends up in the slot. And that kind of bumped back Demetrius Robertson to second string. You know you're going to have George Pickens out wide. They had to find a way to make room for their true freshman in Jermaine Burton. Bob Lesney's got a big leg. He kicked a 51-yarder against Tennessee, so I mean, just about 20 yards to get in his range. And one timeout in 17 seconds. Daniels to the sideline, and that's caught down at the 30-yard line. Oh, it's picked off now. How in the world did Jamie Robinson end up with that football? The ball sailed a little bit, but you see the shot that Kyrus Jackson took. Well, that's how. Is what he a great play. How about that? Jalen Foster was the one that jarred it loose, and it ends up in Jamie Robinson's hands. Kyrus Jackson has this football. It sails a little bit. And Jalen Foster runs underneath it, and that's just enough contact. Jars the ball loose, and Jamie Robinson, who was coming over from his safety spot, comes up with the turnover. Sure, they're going to take another look at. Well, no. Third and final charge timeout of the half. Georgia, 30 seconds. I'm sure, Kirby Smart would like them to take another look at this to make sure that Robinson had a foot down and had possession of the football. But that was unbelievable. Jackson taking that hit and somehow Robinson coming up with the football. His second career pick. First one he's had this season. We'll just have to think. Obviously, you want to get this call right defensively. If you're Georgia, I also think maybe they want to take another look at it. Curious Jackson almost makes a great catch. Bounces right off of him. He's definitely in bounds. Great effort play. Jamie Robinson tracking that ball. But it was really Jalen Foster running underneath Karis Jackson that jarred it loose. So, Doty from his own 30-yard line with only nine seconds to go in the half. Under pressure and sacked very quickly by Ojolari to end the half. Aziz Ojolari with five and a half sacks now on the season to end the first half as Georgia takes a 28 to 10 break into the locker room. Coming up, it's the region's halftime report with Dari Noka and Gene Chisholm. Indeed, it is the region's halftime report. Dari Chiswick. And the JT Daniels uh, performance, he hasn't had to do a lot. They're running the ball. They're showing balance offensively. 
this continues to look like a different team, doesn't it? Well, I think they went back and looked last week, Dari. They weren't happy with eight yards rushing. That's not who no, Georgia no. is. They're never going to be that. They went back and said, we probably got away from the run too early. Let's go back. Let's win the line of scrimmage. They're doing it today. Look, James Cook's averaging 20 yards a carry, okay? Does that tell you that'll, anything? That'll, you know what that is? That's like Michelle and Chubb in that Rose Bowl against Oklahoma. I think they were like 16 yards a carry. <laughs> You'll take that average, right? Oh, absolutely. So right now, JT Daniels, he doesn't have to do a lot. Right. No, no doubt. All right. On the other side of this real quick, South Carolina, Luke Doty, efficient, not throwing up a bunch of yards, though. But in general, this is a team that people could look at and say, we don't even know what they're playing for anymore, right? That doesn't appear to be the case when he's the quarterback. What do you see from South Carolina offensively? A spark. that there. Right. There's a guy that comes in there now and gives these guys hope. Look, he's 11 for 14. He's only thrown for a little over 100 yards. Yeah. But you can see the receivers around him, the running backs. Everybody, it looks like when he comes in, he's given the offense a spark. That's what he needs to do. He's a young guy. He can extend plays with his feet. It's going to be a really interesting guy to watch the second half, right. see how they turn him loose. But it is a 28-10 Georgia lead as we send it back out to Columbia. Alyssa Lang with Kirby Smart. Coach, you've, we're ready. are you ready? Good. Coach, you've had a lot of success running the ball in the first half. What was working for you guys? Well, up the middle, we've been really powerful there. Zamir's doing a good job. I thought the O-line's pushing the pile. Uh, they're a little bit down a little bit in terms of d linemen, so we're trying to take advantage of it. What, how would you evaluate the way your defense has played so far? Hot and cold. You know, we started out well. They got us off rhythm with some uh, speed, fastball stuff. Young quarterback's doing a good job for them. Thanks, we got to tackle better. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Well, it's it's the, the way that offense is playing. They uh, they're in good shape right now in Columbia. All right, Iron Bowl. Auburn has lost its last four trips to Tuscaloosa. Of course, Steve Sarkeesian, the interim head coach, Nick Saban, isolating at home with COVID. Devonte Smith, senior day, honored as he so should be. Mac Jones, pump fake, and then he finds Devonte. Uh, Devonte behind everybody by yeah, far. Yeah, that's a shock. But what a great play design! They come off the play action right there, and it's actually a double move. Safety bit on it. 66 yards later, standing in the end zone. Two touchdown passes to this point for Mac Jones when he finds Jaleel Billingsley, who is a tight end. Yes, he is a tight end. Tight great end. job by Mac Jones avoiding the pressure on that one. By the way, look at Devonte Smith. Quick slant, inside, moves outside. Nobody's going to catch him. That would be 35th career touchdown catch, extending his own conference career record. 28-6. Najee. Najee. It was just a matter of time, Dar. I mean, he started out slow, but you know what? He's going to get his 100 yards. Again, Alabama's offensive line dominated the game. 11 carries, uh, yeah, right up near 196 yards for him. Five touchdown passes for Mac Jones, and Bama defends its home field once again in the Iron Bowl. They've won five straight games in Tuscaloosa oh, by an average of over 27 points a game. Trying to remember the last time Auburn won in Tuscaloosa. Hmm. Hmm. question. The comeback! Oh, that's what it was. I think I was there. <laughs> I, think I, you were, that. I think you were there, too. All right, Vanderbilt, Missouri, how about a little hit? Story we were all waiting for, rooting for her. Sarah Fuller looking to become the first woman to play in a Power 5 football game. The great Billie Jean King acknowledging it. Wishing luck to Sarah Fuller. Women belong in the game. Of course, play like a girl. The great message on the back of Fuller's helmet. And in the opening kickoff of the second half, Fuller inserted into the game by Derek Mason to deliver that football Missouri's direction. Nice applause from those that were able to get into the stadium at, at Columbia. Holly Rowe choked up. Why not, folks? Sarah Fuller does indeed become the first woman to play in a Power 5 football game. Meanwhile, Missouri had it going. Over 600 yards of offense. Larry Roundtree, 160 yards on the ground. Three rushing touchdowns. Both of those numbers good enough for season highs. But it's about the history that was made by Sarah Fuller. Honestly, haven't taken a second to soak it all in, really. Um, I just think it's incredible that I am able to do this. And all I want to do is be a good influence to the young girls out there. Because there were times like I struggled in sports, but I am so thankful I stuck with it. And it's given me so many opportunities. I just want to say, like, literally, you can do anything you set your mind to. Like, that's, that's the number one thing. 
I thought certainly it was a special moment for, you know, Sarah Fuller. Um, you know, she, she's, she's fantastic. Um, you know, champ is a champ. Um, we, we were lucky to have her uh, here today. Uh, unfortunately, man, she didn't get a chance to kick a field goal. Um, we didn't get that opportunity, but you know, for her, uh, like to be in college football and, uh, like to have a kickoff, like fantastic for her. I think our young players will learn a lot, uh, you know, like from, from being here. Jiz, we all wanted to see her score, right? Vandy couldn't get – they took us. They kind of took a step back offensively in this game. They couldn't get in the end zone. They could not even get into short field goal range. They didn't get into long field goal range. But she made history. She did. How cool is it? It's really cool. And I think the message is really cool. And she said it herself, Dari. Look at the message for all the, the young ladies out there that, that are going to limit themselves and say, I can't do this and I can't do that. Her message is simply this. Yeah. Never, ever limit yourself. You can do whatever you want to do. She was talking about how she stuck with sports even when things were tough. And look where she is. Yeah. I think it's a monumental day. You know my little eight-year-old Leighton. She was watching. She was all excited. Then when Missouri had the ball, she was like, I'm looking for number 32 in white. I'm like, yeah, babe, they're on defense. She's not going to come play defense. But. And they haven't crossed the 50 much today, so I'm not really <laughs> Probably sure. Probably not going to see 32 in white yet again. What a day, though, uh, for Sarah Fuller. And congratulations to her. I know it didn't go the way Derek Mason wanted, but he was a part of making history as well. 28-10, Georgia with the lead at the break. We are back with much more on the Regents Halftime Report. Come on. This Halftime Report is presented by Regents, official bank of the SEC. From the race to get ready, to muddling, mixing, and adding the finishing touch, to logging in right on time. With low prices and grand selection, your neighborhood Goody Goody can help you celebrate all of life's new moments. Goody Goody, toast of the town since 1964. Honey, are you forgetting something? I don't think so, but if I did, I'm sure you'd tell me, right? Test drive, we were supposed to take a test drive. Ah, ah, well, I wonder who that could be. Honey, who is it? Ah, uh, it's scary. This was here. And our test drive. Our test drive? Yeah. Test drive! Enjoy a store-to-door -door test drive at home and save $1,000 on a 2021 Corolla. This Thanksgiving, we're thankful for you. And to show our appreciation, we're bringing you the ultimate Thanksgiving free preview weekend so you can enjoy heart-stopping action movies, captivating drama series, and hilarious comedies. Browse four premium networks for free from November 25th to the 29th. Between HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, and Epix, you'll have access to the best shows and movies this holiday weekend. Don't miss the Thanksgiving free preview from November 25th to the 29th. Nobody likes an awkward silence. You can actually use it for something good. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. You're watching the Regions Halftime Report. Dari and Chiswick with you. What else is happening as we speak? How about LSU on the road at Texas A&M? Aggies ranked fifth. They've got a playoff opportunity, perhaps. Just keep winning and look impressive doing it. Isaiah Spiller impressive making the house call, and it's 10-0 Aggies. Yeah, 52-yard touchdown run. Really, it was... That's the main event with their offense today, yeah. being able to run the football, and he's the main reason. What, 125 yards on 15 carries in the first half for him, and then P.J. Finley picked off by Jalen Jones. This after an LSU touchdown was reversed. Aggies lead at the break. 
right now, 13 to nothing. Egg Bowl, 93rd edition of the Egg Bowl. Now, it's 117th meeting between these two, but they've only played for the Golden Egg now 93 times. And this one, Lane and Leach, their first meeting in this game. Matt Corral, Ontario Drum and Strike. Boy, does that guy have a heck of an arm. Accurate and strong. Great deep ball thrower, and he does it over and over every single week. Different receivers, same result. Here it is again. Where he puts the ball, Dari, is amazing. Great accuracy. <laughs> Raylan Sanders, 81 yards. Ole Miss leading at that point, 21 to 7. Fourth quarter. Mississippi State hanging around here. Down seven. Will Rogers launches for Jaquarius Spivey. I have no idea how he made this catch, but he did. Three blue shirts around him. Yeah. And he comes down with the ball. Leaves one last chance from the 37. And he gave his guys a chance. But it was incomplete. And Ole Miss gets the win. Over a thousand yards of total offense in this game. Rebels rack up 550 themselves. Three straight games of 500 plus, And they get their first win in the series in the last three years. What jumps out most? Both teams had success on offense, as we figured they probably would. Yeah, it was a great game, wasn't it? I mean, that's what you were hoping rivalry games look like. But I, I got to say this about Mississippi State. Even though they lost the game, Dari, first of all, it has to be noted, they were playing with less than 50. Yes. 47 scholarship. 47 scholarship guys is what they played with today, okay? And if you take back-to-back -back weeks, last week against Georgia, this week against Mississippi, they had a chance at the end of both games to win it. Yeah. They were one touchdown down. This is throwing to the end zone, you know, to tie the game from the 38-yard line. But you're doing it with young guys. Look at Will Rogers' day, 440 yards passing. Yeah. You're starting to see the offense come on. I only would love to know if that ball was caught, if the oh, Pirate would have gone for two. I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. I already had the two-point play. That would have been fun. James Cook, just five carries, but he's put 98 yards and two touchdowns of work in. We're back in a moment. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. What do you do for a living? I work in renewable energy. I find new ways to use wind and sun and water to make electricity. What is the coolest aspect of your job? It's just like solving a puzzle. Once you've solved it, you get confident and you like it and you want to do it again. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. We're done with disposables. Introducing super leak-proof underwear from NYX. The most absorbent period undies ever. They look and feel and machine wash just like regular underwear. Because we're done with tampons running out, pads getting twisted, and days being ruined. Leave that trash behind and switch to super comfortable, super confident, super leak-proof underwear. Visit NYX.com.
Dorian Chizik back with you here as Florida, sixth-ranked team in the initial college football playoff rankings, hosting Kentucky, program they've beaten 32 of the last 33 times they played him. Perry Wilson, though, to Keaton Upshaw. Kentucky ties the game at seven. Slow start offensively for Florida and yeah. defensively for that. Moment. Yeah, defensively, mainly they couldn't yeah. stop the run. That's why you saw the play action pass. Kentucky punting. They got two guys back to the Gators, and the, D the Cats are focused on Xavier Henderson, not Kadarius Toney to whom the football actually travels. Yeah, and it drags two-thirds of the coverage on the punt unit over to the wrong guy. But more importantly, Dari, why are you punting to number one? There is Tony, yeah, that's... That would be my first question. Well, that, it should be your second and third as well. Kyle Trask then to Kyle Pitts. Pitts had missed the last two games. Comes back, catches three touchdown balls. Yeah, what's surprising about that, right? First not game back. Not a singular thing. All right, SEC. Football final coming up as soon as we are finished in Columbia, South Carolina. Full recap of the six days of the game. Deeper dive into the Iron Bowl, the Egg Bowl, and Sarah Fuller's historic afternoon. But it's all dogs to this point. Still time. Still time for Doty and the Gamecocks to make a little run here. Second half straight ahead for williams Bryce. This halftime report is presented by Regions, official bank of the SEC. Can I get some more cheese with a flatbread? What happened? I don't know. It just keeps disappearing. You know what they say, bone eats first. Some of you know that I love cooking, but I don't have the time to spend forever in the kitchen. I have like three jobs and two kids. I'm always thinking about how to get fresh veggies into my kids' bellies without any drama. You know I love drama, just not at mealtime. With HelloFresh, I don't even have to think about it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code YUMMY90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale. Luke Doty making his first career start, true freshman for the Gamecocks, down 28-10 to JT Daniels and the Georgia Bulldogs as we get ready to start the third quarter. I've always wanted to be taller than you. <laughs> Got a shoes you're wearing over there, pal. <laughs> Man, I ate a lot during Pretty Thanksgiving. Impressive. Grew a foot. <laughs> With the College Football Hall of Famer, Matt Stinchko, Melissa Lang, I'm Taylor Zarzer. How about the dogs' ground game in the first half? Yeah, 208 yards, and if you don't have that sack from JT Daniels, they would already have eclipsed their season high. Huge holes all first half. James Cook able to get going, ripping off big runs. He finished with almost 100 yards in the first half alone. Two touchdowns, Zamir White. McIntosh getting in on the action, but really it's the big boys up front that are doing work. 
and as Kirby Smart talked about it going into half, offensively Georgia taking advantage of South Carolina. They don't have the bodies. They're frontline guys along their defensive front. They aren't out there. Jordan Birch, their prized true freshman, Keir Thomas, one of the better defensive linemen from a versatility standpoint in the conference. He's not out there. Aaron Sterling, Brad Johnson, and Agbury. I mean, some really good football players. Gamecocks will get it first, Alyssa. Hey guys, I just caught up with Gamecocks coach Mike Bobo and talked to him about what he said to the team at halftime. He said defensively, we've got to get more guys to the ball. We have got to stop the success they're having running it. I asked him how impressed he was with Luke Doty in the first half. He said he's been impressed with his poise and what he's been able to do in the pocket, but he also reminded the offense that they're not going to win this game on one play. They need to be consistently better across the board. Let's see if they're able to do that here on this first possession with Doty, who was very good with intermediate throws, 11 of 13 for 104 yards, back to the ground. Somehow Harris trying to fight off Monty Rice, unable to do it. Let's take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Zaxby's. Well, it was impressive to say the least. And it starts with the rushing yardage, the total yards for Georgia fueled by that. Of course, third downs, highly efficient for Georgia, four or five. And you see the yards per play, almost nine yards per play, nine yards per carry in the ground game for Georgia, something that certainly South Carolina's got to find a way to slow that down to have a chance here in the second half. Doty fakes it to Harris, now throws it behind him. That's a backwards pass, and it'll be marked out of bounds back at the 17-yard line. That's a disastrous play the negative yardage because it's going to get spotted where it goes out of bounds as you mentioned this is the same as a fumble backwards pass he's trying to get this ball out late he had success doing this versus Missouri as he's being tackled a couple of times was able to deliver completions downfield that time the backwards pass a negative yardage play third and forever a horrible way to open up this possession here in the second half third and 18 for an offense that really doesn't like to throw the football much and there's no place to go as Jermaine Johnson gets the sack. A quick three and out for Kirby Smart and Dan Lanning's defense. A lot of youth on that series from Luke Doty. As we talked about what Alyssa was sharing, Mike Bobo was impressed by his poise. At that time, a poor decision that marred that possession and Georgia with a chance to get the ball near midfield. Ty Kroger, in fact, is standing in his own end zone. Kyrus Jackson for a great punt. will take it near the 35. He's got daylight. Watch out here. He's got Kroger to beat. Cuts it back, and Kroger saves the touchdown inside the 15. A booming punt from Kroger. Excellent return set up for Kyrus Jackson. He kept it simple. Just get up field. Don't dance. Pick up yardage right now. He runs right down the numbers. If it weren't for Kroger, he ends up in the end zone as it is. Disastrous way to open up this second half. You get a negative yardage play. Sets up a third and forever. An excellent punt return. Georgia gets their first possession of the second half inside the red zone. Out kick the coverage. 52 yes. yard punt, 51 yard return. And it's McIntosh eluding the tackle, cutting it back to the middle of the field, and he's inside the 10. Quickly to Alyssa. Guys, quick injury update for the South Carolina defense. Ernest Jones, who plays the mic position, sitting in street clothes right now on the sidelines. He is out with an ankle. And that's the last guy you want to lose if yeah. you're the Gamecocks. You're right. I mean, that, that's the mainstay. That was the one cornerstone you still had left in your front seven. McIntosh out, White in. Zamir pushes the pile inside the five. Finally whistled down near the three. And that's first and goal. 
And Kirby Smart talked about it going in at halftime. You know, it makes sense to keep testing the middle of that defense. Damani Staley, among others, guys that are being forced, they're playing behind the line of scrimmage. Staley was an outside linebacker, more of a rush linebacker coming out of high school. A guy that spends all his time off the line now trying to play the run in the box. White right at him. Touchdown. They waited to see where the pile was, and it was clear it's another Zamir White score. Georgia with its most rushing yards of the season, eclipsing the total they had at Kentucky, and they do it with 11.38 to go in the third quarter. It's just inside zone. And you see the push repeatedly. We've hit it. MJ Webb was finally able to try to get on top of Zamir White, but not before we've gotten enough momentum going downhill to get in the end zone. Well, Georgia had a 28-10 lead, and the Gamecocks had the ball plenty of time in the second quarter and got it first in the second half. Had a chance to maybe make it a one-score game. Instead, the route is on. 35 to 10, Kiaris Jackson makes the South Carolina team pay with a 51-yard punt return. Zamir White in the end zone. Toyotathon is oh wait. Toyotathon is on. Come in today. During Toyotathon, get $1,000 customer cash on an adventurous new 2021 RAV4. That's a wrap. Toyota, let's go places. Merry Christmas, children. Merry Christmas, Papa. Go ahead, open them up. <laughs> yeah! This is what I asked Santa for. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Don't think I forgot about you. Honey, a filet. You know me so well. The last day of Black Friday deals is here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get up to 50% off game tables, bikes, and ride-ons. Up to 25% off Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour apparel and footwear. Shop Black Friday fun this Saturday at your local store and academy.com. Todos tenemos millas que recuperar. Millas al lugar de trabajo, a donde están los amigos y la familia, o a cualquier otro lugar que imaginemos. Así que pongámonos manos a la obra, porque aún tenemos millas que recuperar. Ahora obtén precio de empleado para todos, o residentes de Texas obtienen financiamiento al 0% por 84 meses en la Round 1500 Lone Star Crew Cup 2020. Still hard to find a spot, just easier to park. Still the big move, just more moving. Still singing, just more in tune. Still the gang's all here, just less are we there yet. The Chevy family of SUVs, making life's journey just better. Now during the Chevy Cyber Sales event, use $500 Cyber Cash on most SUV models to get $5,250 total cash allowance on most 2020 Equinox models. Visit ChevyCyberSalesEvent.com today. On the right, the man that set up the score for the dogs, and on the left, the one that finished it off. Yeah, they kind of ham and egged it a little bit, special teams. They don't take nothing away from the defense. Amir White able to punch it in. Kiaris Jackson, the fantastic punt return for a touchdown. Even the notes, Kiaris Jackson was the state champion shot putter in high school. I see that one. Not for a wide receiver? No. Dogs can do it all tonight, 35-10 to 10, with this lead over the Gamecocks. And this is the Georgia team, at least offensively, this is the team we wondered if we would see going into the season, having to replace Jake Fromm, that quarterback. First they thought they would get Jamie Newman, the Wake Forest transfer who opted out. Juan Mathis started the season, Stetson Bennett standing next to JT Daniels over there on the sideline. Started six games. 
Hugs offense looked great tonight in all phases. Hitting Kevin Harris hard on defense as well as Lewis Seen comes up to make the tackle. And the Georgia defense the last couple of weeks has needed to pick up the slack. Granted, Richard LeCount, Julian Rochester, and Jordan Davis are all out. Yeah, they're down numbers, there's no doubt. Certainly, though, not to their standard from a yardage seeded standpoint, especially last week on the third downs. Harris, gosh, he runs hard and makes another man miss. As he could have been tackled after a minimal gain, Christopher Smith had a hand on him, but Harris so hard to bring down. Nine yard pickup. Christopher Smith's going to be sick at number 20. You see it over and over again. It's actually Quay Walker. Walker. Yeah. yeah. Coming up there, that's a linebacker, you know, big body. And play after play, they go to Kevin Harris. And, and Mike Bobo said going in, at such a disadvantage given the injuries that South Carolina has at wide receiver, that they were going to have to utilize Luke Doty's athletic ability and feed one of the best tailbacks in the game throwing it to him and handing it to him. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I mean, it, it's largely been Kevin Harris. I'm surprised at how little Q run game, quarterback run game that we've seen in this game. And Kevin Harris has done an excellent job as a receiver as well. Doty wants to throw it downfield, but will keep it himself after a gain of four. Forced out by N'Kobe Dean. First time we've called the Kobe Deans for here tonight. The better linebackers in the conference. It's been a tackling machine the last three weeks with 41 tackles the last three games. Amos comes in giving Kevin Harris a breather on this second and six. Doty's in under pressure and he goes down again. Sack made by Channing Tindall. That just shows the speed of this Georgia defense. Last week, Luke Doty was dancing all over the football field versus Missouri. Channing Tindall, of course, has a full head of steam as he's coming off of that play fake. Didn't bite on it enough. And they were counting on it. That's a local kid, too, from here in Columbia. Channing Tindall comes back, playing for Georgia, and gets the sack. And now, under pressure again, balls out. And diving on it is Dylan Wanham. Ojolari with the pressure. And Aziz Ojolari, really good football player. He was actually squeezing from the opposite side, and Adam Anderson able to come up and under Wanham. Luke Doty having a tough start to the second half. Georgia defense has stepped it up. Kirby Smart said at the break, got to tackle better, get it, got to get off the field. They have done just that. All dogs tonight. Some more cheese with a flatbread? What happened? I don't know, it just keeps disappearing. You know what they say, bone eats first. Some of you know that I love cooking, but I don't have the time to spend forever in the kitchen. I have like three jobs and two kids. I'm always thinking about how to get fresh veggies into my kids' bellies without any drama. You know I love drama, which is not a mealtime. With HelloFresh, I don't even have to think about it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code YUMMY90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale.
Dorian OK in studio. It's time for our comeback moment, supplemented by Aflac. You bet, Aflac. Florida trailed Kentucky, believe it or not. 10-7, a program they've beaten 32 of the last 33 times. Welcome back. After two games away, Kyle Pitts comes back, catches all three of Kyle Trask's touchdown passes. Gators roll. All right, Dari, here, Georgia leads South Carolina 35-10. to Dogs have to win their remaining games, and Florida must lose next week to Tennessee and then lose in that makeup game to LSU if Georgia's going to go back to Atlanta. On the other side, Alabama only needs one more win after the win against Auburn today. A&M would need to win out and combine with two Alabama losses. Short story, it's probably going to be Alabama and Florida in the SEC championship game. James Cook gets up near the 42-yard line. Georgia has been gashing the Gamecocks all night. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be more of the same, especially when you're that effective on first down. It's second down in the entire playbook as James Cook eclipses 100 yards rushing on the night, 104 now. Georgia's enjoyed pretty good starting field position. They've averaged their own 39 to start drives. Loading up is Daniels, and he finds Burton open. Inside the 45-yard line, down to the 41. I've seen a ton of passes from JT Daniels in this game. Run game has largely dominated the offense for Georgia. But Jermaine Burton has emerged, certainly for JT Daniels, in his short time at quarterback as one of his favorite targets. Kind of a quieter night relative to what we saw last Saturday. Yeah, hasn't had to tonight. Just 8 of 11 passing as they go back to McIntosh. Eluding the tacklers. Look, he almost took a face mask there. And McIntosh is down at the 35-yard line. Daniels this is a completely different game plan than the one that he used against Mississippi State. Yeah, he's not... He is not as essential as he was. The running backs have been. And McIntosh kind of channeling his inner Kevin Harris. A great effort to pick up five yards, maybe six. White comes in. Daniels will throw it away to the sideline. As Dejon Edwards was the intended target, it's third and four. Yeah, it looked like he had an opportunity early downfield. Burton running wide open, safety fell down in his back pedal. Again, Daniels had felt the pressure, took his eyes off of the route tree. Some third downs, they've only faced five of them as Georgia. He's been excellent, 80%. McIntosh, without any problem, moves the chains inside the 30. Damani Stanley, Staley makes the tackle. Again, South Carolina at a massive disadvantage on their defensive front. J.J. Anagbury and Keir Thomas both out tonight in Georgia. Pushing the pile play after play. This is a sideline throw to Jackson. For a few. He jumped in their tempo a little bit there. Or is the long handoff. Look at the blocking out in front. Demetrius Robertson, that ball a little bit behind Chris Jackson. A long way to travel. He's headed back towards the line of scrimmage by the time he made the catch. Dean John Edwards, the true freshman into the game and he's the fourth different tailback to touch the football tonight and he's down near the 20 where it'll be third and short. And what's coming in there as George is quick to the line once again. Quick to line up and looking to snap it quick on the third and short. Edwards first down inside the 15. It hadn't mattered really. Who's getting the handoffs in the ground game tonight? Well, Georgia's done such a good job of opening holes for the running backs. 
And how about this hole? Edwards, touchdown. There is a flag down. Illegal formation, more than four players in the offensive backfield. Five yard penalty, still first down. I can see Kiaris Jackson. He's kind of over there pleading his case after the fact. As you see Kirby Smart lamenting the penalty to negate a touchdown. Look at the bottom of the screen. We're seeing we're off the line of scrimmage right there. Otherwise, here's Cobb, the true freshman from Clinton, North Carolina. He's been pressed into action this year due to attrition. Timeout on the field. Can I get some more cheese with a flatbread? I don't know, it just keeps disappearing. You know what they say, bone eats first. Some of you know that I love cooking, but I don't have the time to spend forever in the kitchen. I have like three jobs and two kids. I'm always thinking about how to get fresh veggies into my kids' bellies without any drama. You know I love drama, which is not at mealtime. With HelloFresh, I don't even have to think about it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code YUMMY90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale. Take a look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes. Path is clear for Florida and Alabama. Each need just one more win to clinch a spot in Atlanta to compete against each other in what would really be a de facto quarterfinal game. Right. You know, when you look at those two football teams, you know, if you're Florida, you know, one loss coming on the road by three points to AM, and AM sitting just outside the current college football playoff rankings top four at number five in the country daniels takes a shot and that was dangerous almost picked off by shiloh sanders yes dion's kid should have been picked cam yeah. smith is injured and this is a bad decision by jt daniels he tried to force this one in there Shiloh Sanders easily could have come up with that pick and gone the other direction with it. See this right now. And Cam Smith 
actually ends up kind of, it looks like Smith gets a piece of this football with his right arm inadvertently. He ends up unintentionally breaking up the would-be interception of Sanders. It didn't even look like Burton was looking for the football yet. Tenth play of the drive coming up. On second and 15. Daniels to the end zone and it's dropped. Burton had a hand on it. He had a shot at it though. As you mentioned, he drops this ball in there. There's some hand fighting along the boundary. Burton just couldn't quite corral this one. Had a shot at it, no doubt. They'll watch that one on film and know that they missed on that one. Working against Joey Hunter. Pressed into service with that injury to Cam Smith. Third down and 15 for Georgia. Must get to the five-yard line. Edwards with the handoff. And he stopped inside the 15 down at the 14. Jalen Foster on the tackle. Anticlimactic end to a long drive. And remember, Edwards was in the end zone. It was an illegal formation that brought that touchdown run back. The dogs will settle for a field goal. Well, Rodrigo Blankenship had such a terrific career. Jack Podlesny, the redshirt sophomore from St. Simons Island, Georgia, has come in and had a great year so far. 9 of 11, this from 32 yards. And our new score is 38 to 10, Georgia. So I know you're probably trying to figure out where to get your Christmas gifts, and I have the answer for you right here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. They have everything that you might need, including trampolines. Let's just not wait to wrap up the trampoline, put it under the tree. Just go ahead and get it right now so you can have fun all season long, right? With Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang, I'm Taylor Zarzer here at williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, where the dogs are all over the Gamecocks tonight. 38 to 10, Mike Bobo coaching against his alma mater. Stinch, I know that Georgia fans are disappointed because the standard now with Kirby Smart is compete for the national championship. And in 2017, 18, and 19, at least through the SEC championship game, they were doing that. Chances are that's not the case this season. Yeah, outside looking in this year, all SEC schedule, you drop that game versus Alabama, and then you lose further ground. And you were incapable of capitalizing on plays that were there to be made in the passing game versus the Gators. The starter at the time, Stetson Bennett separates that shoulder. What was the difference in that ball game? Take another away from the Gators. That offense has been special. Second only really to the tide this year offensively. And unsurprisingly, a couple of Heisman front runners at quarterback for both those teams. That's what you have to have if you're going to compete for a title. And Georgia has discovered their quarterback, but it's taken almost to the end of the season for that to happen. Meanwhile, the Gamecocks have had their own issues at quarterback this year. Colin Hill, graduate transfer from Colorado State, starting the first eight games of the season. Of course, Ryan Holinsky was the starter in 11 of the 12 games last year. He's still on the roster. Now it's Luke Doty's turn, the true freshman, giving it to the workhorse, Kevin Harris, who stopped by Zion Lowe. Hey, you know, if you're a South Carolina fan, at least you're taking a look at that. This is a peek into the future, perhaps. You got a guy in Luke Doty who is nothing if not incredibly dynamic. A guy that, you know, tonight has largely been bottled up as a runner and has quite a bit of ground to cover as a passer but there's no doubt that his influence on his teammates and his ability uh, can have a big impact on what this offense can look like going forward. Harris is a sophomore, Doty is a freshman, so start there on offense. Senior Nick Muse has been a bright spot on offense this year, and he's passed the 45-yard line for a first down. Nice move by Nick Muse. Not only you break a tackle right away, but then the reverse field Couple of shallow cross and mesh right there and runs right through a couple of Georgia defenders. Big gainer. William and Mary transfer. 
nice season last year, 39 catches last two years. Doty skips one in there to Brooks. Of course, Nick's brother, Tanner, is playing for the Gamecocks as well. And now is, or excuse me, Clemson, excuse me, you can't make that mistake. Two-time national champion there. And now he's playing for the Raiders. That, a couple of national championships at the next level. Nick Muse, he has certainly made his presence felt in this offense this season. We've had to have him step up. He's had a good game. Oh, and look, this play's blown up. Somehow, Zaquandre White playing both ways tonight was able to get to the sideline. The Georgia Bulldogs were there in the backfield as the handoff was made. Well, that time the defensive line, they just jet up field right now. Jalen Carter, he's seen that play enough times at this point to kind of anticipate it. Blew up field and blew that whole mesh point and handoff up. And you see a lot of pulling guards in this game. And that penetration undid that play. Well, Deshaun Fenwick tonight. Another grab by Muse, who's wrestled down at the 45-yard line by C. It'll be short after a pickup of 14. Oh, but just shy of it. Good ball over the middle. It looked like Muse's second effort almost got it there. On fourth and one, White moves the chains. It's kind of been the story of South Carolina's season. You got guys playing both ways. Will Muschamp, the head coach of the Gamecocks, until two weeks ago was talking about that all season. That just week after week, the issues they had with availability. This is Jalen Brooks with no place to go as Tyson Campbell takes him off his feet. Well, that was just a bust. Tyson Campbell is supposed to be blocked by the inside receiver. It's part of the reason why Luke Doty, you see him kind of hitch. He wasn't setting that up for a pump that He looks out there and he's like, wait a second. You're supposed to be clean. Missed a blocking assignment out there at wide receiver. Doty picked off. It's Campbell stepping in front, coming back the other way. Slips a tackle and is inside the 35-yard line. Tyson Campbell with his first interception of the season, the junior from Plantation, Florida. He was on Jalen Brooks, and he falls off of coverage. Just read the quarterback's eyes. It's Luke Doty. He's trying to fit it in there. And Tyson Campbell just falls right underneath that throw. It's a 40-yard return. He gives Georgia the football towards the end of the third quarter at the South Carolina 31. Back to the ground. McIntosh with those huge holes all night. This is 10 more. Warren Erickson in there now. Offensive front, yeah, right guard for Georgia. It's kind of hard to believe that given the back and forth this rivalry has created in the 20th century, especially in this decade, in the last 10 years with each team winning five times, this would be a get right game for Georgia's ground game, but that's been what it is tonight. McIntosh. Stumbles, but gets inside the 10-yard line. There's a flag down. White has 84 yards. McIntosh, depending on this call. Holding. Offense number 50. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. He has 79 and cooks over 100. Incredible performance by them tonight. That's Warren Erickson. I just mentioned him in there. He rotates at times with Ben Cleveland at right guard. there at center it was around this part of the field in the previous drive 
where Georgia run the football well, ends up with a procedure penalty, a legal formation, now a holding penalty. Georgia's going to take a four touchdown lead into the fourth quarter in this rivalry game between two old friends, Kirby Smart and Mike Bobo. Latest big play by the Dogs is an interception by Tyson Campbell. Gets to wear some hardware. Your next meal doesn't have to be just another meal. Because with HelloFresh, it could be a moment. Thanks to our perfectly portioned ingredients and so many delicious recipes to choose from every week, the whole family can join in on the fun, especially the kiddos. So make HelloFresh and make your next moment. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code YUM90 for $90 off, including free shipping during our Black Friday sale. Gary no okay in studio. We update what's going on with LSU in Texas A&M and a costly mistake from T.J. Finley picked up by Buddy Johnson and then the short return into the end zone for the pick six guys late third 20 zip gigam. Wow. How about that? Aggies defense all over LSU tonight here. JT Daniels first play of the fourth quarter. Hello. Touchdown. All the way to the end zone. It's Arian Smith. Smith on the Georgia touchdown. And the Smith looked like he was fired out of a rocket. Out of a cannon, man. We were told by the coaches, make well, sure he is on your board. We want to get a ball to him. And they did. <laughs> yeah, coaches rolling ankles over there trying to celebrate with these guys. You know, they, they all take the, those lessons from Kirby. He's been doing that for years. Yeah, he's doing that to get somebody's attention. <laughs> <laughs> I 
How about that? Arian Smith, a true freshman. Bradley, Florida, getting some congratulations on the sidelines. They had probably a delayed game offense. Five yard penalty. Still the try. He had a few minutes to think about that, knowing it was about to happen. That's a good looking ball from JT Daniels, an open receiver to throw at, working against Joey Hunter. And you talk about it. A shorthanded secondary that got even more shorthanded tonight. Cam Smith injury. Guys were pressed into starting roles. And the passing game popping up for Georgia. Well, the dogs have found their quarterback. There's no doubt about that. But this offseason, there were all kinds of options. You know, you had Mathis, Bennett, Beck. Jamie Newman transferred in from Wake Forest, but then opted out before the season started. That was aggressive. JT Daniels comes in, starts last week, throws for over 400 yards and four touchdowns. Speaking of aggressive, that's an aggressive mustache that has since been removed. Yes, that's right, man. <laughs> Maybe the mask pulled it off. Regardless, quieter night tonight. You know, the interception was a strange one. You know, kind of bounced off Karis Jackson. The 10 of 16, efficient, 139 yards. And you know, really, it's been all about the ground game. And so you've got back-to-back -back weeks, polar opposites. You know, they needed every one of those touchdown throws a week ago to beat Mississippi State just to keep pace with the Bulldogs. So I'm sure all Georgia fans that are watching, and I'm sure they've been doing this to you all week, given your legendary status with the school. But they've been asking, where was he? Where, how did? Why did it take? so long this is a mistake white is going to be tackled i guess they'll give him the two yard line we'll get to daniels in just a second but nice tackle by sherman and they're going to mark this let's see at the two wow Of course, you can call a fair catch anywhere inside the 25-yard line. It's, that's exactly what his coach is letting him know. Now you've got your offense backed up, little to no breathing room. White's defense, big defense, the running back, is returning the kicks. Amos, he'll give him breathing room. Stays on his feet near the 35-yard line. A nice run. Well, the shot, Amos. I should pass this run. Great job. He was heading towards the point of contact, right on the right side of that offensive line. You see defensive coordinator Dan Lanning coaching up his players real time as some fog rolls in to Williams Bryce. This is Amos again. Not much. All right, let's get back to Daniels here. So I'm sure everybody was saying, gosh, that was great last week. He looked great. He looks great tonight. What took so long? Kirby Smart yesterday in our call with him gave some really level-headed perspective on the situation with JT Daniels and why it took until last week for him to start a quarterback. You know, part of it was the guy was not even on the radar screen when he's getting his knee kind of repaired for the second go round comes in to rehab his tail off. Athletic trainer Ron Corson said, I've never seen a guy beat him to the facility so consistently trying to get back out on the field. Nice pass to Muse, and Nick is in to Georgia territory. And it took that time, I think, although he was medically cleared was JT Daniels, he had to become ready to play. You know, just because you can play doesn't mean that you're actually ready to play. Another big one to the tight end for South Carolina. And so he, he kind of begged his way on to get go down there and work with the scout team. Look squad, face this defense. This isn't a good defense to build your confidence against, especially during summer camp. Todd Munkin talked about it. For all the quarterbacks, you almost wonder if that's what informed Jamie Newman's decision to tap out before the season even started. GT Daniels coming off that injury. 
was kind of in limbo from a rehab standpoint before he landed here as you see him talking with his receivers. Well, and if you have two surgeries and the second surgery you do it on your own when you're not yeah. still at USC, you haven't gotten to Georgia yet, you can understand Kirby's concern making sure I got to see if this guy's knee is okay before we really put him out there on the field. Nice pass by Doty again to Muse. Big hit from Lewis Seen. Seen has to come out almost immediately. I don't know if it's an equipment issue or not. Remember, he was the concussion protocol after the game versus Florida. Doty with a great job not giving the ball to Zaquandre White, and that's the athleticism that Mike Bobo was talking about. As Tyreek Stevenson makes the tackle inside the 25 yard line. Look at this, he wanted to give it to White and realized that would be a terrible decision. Kept it himself. Tyreek Stevenson right on top of the mesh point. Dirty making it happen. Now White inside the 15 down to the 14. Of course, White is the guy that took the kick return and Gamecock started this drive at their own two. We've seen a couple of impressive drives for South Carolina. True freshman quarterback in his first start. Shoestring roster from a skill position standpoint. They're still finding ways to move the ball. White will get down to the 12-yard line where it'll be second down. Playing both ways. He's been a running back, a linebacker, running back, linebacker. Tonight he's doing both of those things. And a kick returner. Started his career at Florida State and is Went to a couple of junior colleges before ending up at South Carolina. They had high hopes for him before some injuries in camp. Second and eight. He bounces it outside, dives over, and then is tackled after a gain of maybe one. It's Trayvon Walker. Yeah, well, that's the most athletic run for no gain I've seen in a while. <laughs> How about this hurdle? And he lands on his feet. It looks like, you know, a lot of times you'll see guys hurdle. They're going down. You know, they might get their feet back down for a little bit, but they're going to stagger to the ground. It looked to me like White was going to be able to gather himself and keep running if it weren't for Walker to make that tackle. Third and seven. You see Muse and Prentice move from one side of the line to the other. Doty. Keeps it himself and is out of bounds. He'll be shy of the first down. It'll be fourth and a couple. The fog is rolled into Columbia. Maybe by way of Oregon last night. <laughs> you could barely see the field in that beaver win over the Ducks last night. One coast to the other. Thank goodness they were wearing highlighter jerseys. <laughs> well, as you're right, exactly right. You wouldn't be able to see the players on the field. South Carolina's been 100% tonight on fourth down. See if they can keep their perfect mark, two for two. Doty sprints out to Muse, a career night, and it's a touchdown. drive for South Carolina and Nick Muse what a night he's had he's up in the end zone again and repeatedly we've talked about it no shy Smith they had to have somebody pop up Nick Muse has been there but he hasn't been the primary and tonight as is often the case found ways to get him the football and he's capitalized extra point is partially blocked no good. Jalen Carter, I believe, got a hand on it. 11 play, 98 yard touchdown drive as the graduate transfer from William and Mary, Nick Muse, biggest night of his career. It's still hard to find a spot just easier to park. Still the big move, just more moving. Still singing, just more in tune. Still the gang's all here, just less are we there yet. 
the Chevy family of SUVs, making life's journey just better. Now, during the Chevy Cyber Sales event, use $500 Cyber Cash on most SUV models to get $5,250 total cash allowance on most 2020 Equinox models. Visit ChevyCyberSalesEvent.com today. This Thanksgiving, HBO Max invites you to enjoy HBO for free. Here we go. Let's get together. Plus, discover a special collection of exclusive Max Originals on demand. <laughs> All Ooh. for free. Whoa. During the HBO Max free preview event, November 25th through the 29th. This is very exciting. You ready? Booyah. Experience amazing shows and movies during the HBO Max free preview event. Gray than he had when he was being protected by Matt Stinchcomb. I might add, decades ago. <laughs> Back in the mid-90s, there's Stinch over there on the left, number 79, and there's Mike Bobo saying, we're going to give it to number 19, Heinz Ward, in some way, shape, or form, probably. That's right. Not a bad plan. Yeah. Only a quarter of a century ago. Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? This is Jackson. Great punt return, a couple of good kick returns tonight too, and he gets it past the 30-yard line. Mike, of course, was at Colorado State for five years and came back to this coast to be the offensive coordinator for his great friend Will Muschamp this year, and I can tell you that he is just as upset as anybody that it didn't work for Will here at South Carolina and that he was pressed into being the interim head coach. He, like the rest of us that have been around Will for a long time, think the world of him. I'm sure he's watching tonight. First and 10 with the carry to Edwards. And Edwards will get a few. And Mike said he wants to continue to be an offensive coordinator. He wants to continue to call plays in college football, no matter where that is next year. Well, a guy can coordinate offense, there's no doubt. I mean, his offense is you look back to his years at Georgia, and the numbers speak for themselves. There's no doubt that he can coach and he can recruit as well. It'll never likely be felt here in South Carolina. A short stay certainly didn't go the way they intended. They have a ton to work with coming into this season. Had some opt-outs at receiver especially. Ultra Smith, Rodriguez Davis choosing not to play. Shai Smith, really the that only known piece, although we've seen Nick Muse emerge this season. They're losing Marshawn Lloyd, who was thought to be a, a real difference maker at running back, lost him to an ACL in preseason. Just derailed that season early on, especially offensively. Well, you know how much Coach Muschamp cares about all these guys that he recruited. He's a class act guy. He's just a pleasure to work with, really. Throughout his tenure as a head coach of Florida and South Carolina. We wish him well in the future. Edwards looking good here in the fourth quarter, and he bounces yeah. it up to the 45 yard line. Now, for who will be next here in Columbia, they've already started that process interviewing candidates. 
and they've had uh, several conversations. In fact, they've had one with Shane Beamer, the Oklahoma assistant head coach who worked in the Southeastern Conference, of course, worked at Virginia Tech as well. Jamie Chadwell's having all that success with the Shauna Clears this year. Billy Napier has ties to the area. Hugh Freeze at Liberty's having a great year. And Jeff Munkin, the Army head coach. Of course, that's Todd Munkin, the Georgia offensive coordinator's cousin. Those are just some of the candidates that the Gamecocks are thinking about. Second and two, Edwards gets the first down. What do you think that South Carolina should be looking for? Well, I know what they've said they're looking for. You know, Ray Tanner came out and said, we want a head coach that's offensive-minded, uh, or at least you know, make a higher you know, offensive-minded, a, a creative offensive coordinator. So, you know, the real thing more than anything else, and we've seen this other places, if Sam Pippen goes to Arkansas, he wanted that job. He really wanted it. Nobody thought it was going to be a good hire. You, you didn't win the press conference hiring Sam Pitt. That program's a different program under him. You can tell, obviously, here, you know, on the heels of the Steve Spurrier era, it wasn't going to be easy. It's the most successful head coach that this program's ever seen. You think about three 11-win seasons. You win the division in 2010. You beat Clemson, what, five years in a row? That's going to be really tough to replicate. That's a tough guy to follow, there's no doubt. But there's, those are some strong candidates that we just put up there, there's no doubt. You know, there was reports this week, Scott Satterfield was a candidate, at least from the South Carolina's perspective. You know, he's since put out statements indicating that he's going to stay at Louisville. Um, but there's no doubt the challenge is different here now. You know, when Will Muschamp got here, when Steve Spurrier was coaching here, from a facility standpoint, this program was probably close to last when it came to bringing in recruits and even functioning as a program. That's not the case anymore. We've got fantastic facilities here at South Carolina. Edwards is running hard. The dogs are over 300 yards rushing now tonight. It's the first time they've done that since the beginning of the 2019 season. Well, I don't know who they end up with and who Ray Tanner, the athletic director, decides on. But Shane Beamer was here yeah. when Steve Spurrier had that success, at least for several of those years. Coasted Georgia with Kirby Smart for some years before he joined Lincoln Riley out in Oklahoma. No head coaching experience for Shane Beamer. And you wonder how big of a box is that for Ray Tanner and President Caslin here in South Carolina to be able to check. Kirby Smart, of course, had never been a head coach before he came to Georgia. Edwards all drive long, and it's another first down inside the 25-yard line. Kirby's now all of a sudden has a little bit of a, a coaching tree. Yeah, you know, you think Mel Tucker goes to Colorado for a season, bounces up to Michigan State. Beat Northwestern today. Huge victory for Sparty. Wow. And the Big Ten, you know, Ohio State sitting at home again this week. Game canceled. But you're right, Sam Pippen now, head coach at Arkansas. Shane Beamer getting a look, potentially to be a head coach here in the SEC as well. Play after play, it is Edwards who now has 11 carries on the night. Georgia has over 310 yards as a team. See Edwards pointing over there to the sideline. Hey, does anybody else want to get in here? He have gotten a ton of carries, but he got all eight on this drive before he goes out here. Starting start to wear out. The young player, you don't want to make too much of a habit of that. You see Kirby Smart coming over there, a little pat on the head. Working hard on this drive. They'll go to the bench here and bring in another tailback down to the 13-yard line as we tackled there after a gain of a few. That's it's Prather Hudson. Yeah, Prather Hudson, who's played some defensive back, is now going to play some tailback as a graduate player. All smiles over there on the sideline. Yeah, they got in there. 
Edwards will come over there, get a little water, get a blow, get back out on the field. Arthur Hudson, I think, was the one that ran into Laura Rutledge a couple of years ago while she was doing a sideline. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Mark skipped a beat on that one that night. Edwards gets down to the 10. All right, let's take a look at the five-star play of the game brought to you by Yellowwood. Well, there have been some big plays in this game, there's no doubt. But as a former O-line guy, that one's my favorite, mainly because the hole was just so darn pretty. It just so happened it was James Cook carrying the football. Could have been anybody. I think Alyssa Lang could have scored on that one. <laughs> of course she She's could. a tremendous athlete. I have no doubt the hole wouldn't need, need to be that big, but that was a really well-blocked play by the Georgia offense. She showed player. off some speed last year on the road. So we traveled oh, together. <laughs> it's debatable. Edwards <laughs> inside the five, down to the three. <laughs> No, I think she won that race, didn't she? I think that everybody was pulling for her. She said it was a tie. Oh, girl, that was very the video taste was seemed to look like it was a tie. Sure. That's she was way. she was friendlier to me than the rest of everybody else who was watching. Her. It's great to have Alyssa back here with us tonight. It has been such a crazy season. All of us trying to do our best to be healthy and safe. But it certainly has come at a cost for our traveling band. Third and one. The Edwards show continues. Down near the goal line to the one. And it'll be first and goal. We'll see if see if that will be that. If uh, if Kirby wants to let Edwards finish this drive off, I don't think Mike Bobo would have a problem with that if he decides to let him do that. Or simply take a knee. Yeah. That's what they'll do. Well, and that just shows the yeah. the class that Kirby Smart has and the appreciation that he has for his old teammate Mike Bobo. 45 to 16, the final tonight. Number nine, Georgia improves to six and two on the season with a decisive victory. Good old friends, former teammates. Shaking hands in midfield, JT Daniels. Off a fantastic debut, a more workmanlike approach here tonight on what was a dominating rushing performance by the Georgia offense versus a beleaguered South Carolina roster, just decimated not only by injury, opt-outs, and COVID. And four tailbacks that had over 75 yards rushing, and he ended the game on a drive that lasted over nine minutes. Literally just draining it down. But that was, been, that was the story of the night, and it started early. He had a couple of big explosive plays in that opening possession, but then very quickly, the Georgia rushing attack that did not even exist a week ago really emerged. You see a collection of quarterbacks there, Ryan Halitsky, Colin Hill, JT Daniels, greeting one another at the end of this one. It's a rivalry, there's no doubt. After last year... Well, a lot of these kids played together in high school too. I mean, yeah. with all the South Carolina kids that are from the state of Georgia, that Will Muschamp recruited. Back for more in just a moment as the Dogs beat the Gamecocks 45 to 16. This Thanksgiving, HBO Max invites you to enjoy HBO for free. Oh, here we go. Let's get to Plus, discover a special collection of exclusive Max originals on demand. 